Corporal Mara, thank you for chatting with yes, me. Yes, sir. We, uh, you know, our readers are really interested in uh, the troops over there, and I think sharing your story with them will um, will be a neat thing for Thanksgiving. So I appreciate that. Corporal, tell me, uh, first oh, off, welcome. start with your name for me. Spell it for me. Um, it's, uh, my, you want first name, last yeah, your name? Full, your full name. It's, uh, Kevin. Mm-hmm. Michael. Mara Jr. And it's spelled uh, just like it sounds? Uh, last name is M-A-R-R-A. Okay. And, Kevin, tell me, how old are you? I'm 24 at the moment. 24. And where were you born and reared? What city? I was born in, uh... oh, my gosh, it... I don't know exactly what hospital, but I know it was in jo- Mary, uh, uh, Northside Hospital. Did, I mean, where so, did you, where did you grow up? I see you went to Walton High School. Did you grow up in East Cobb? Yes. Okay, so yeah, you're I did grow up in East Cobb. You're an East Cobber, and you went to Walton. What yes, year sir. did you graduate? Uh, I graduated 2005. 2005, and you joined the military in what year? I joined uh, September. 11th, 2007. And you joined the Marines? Correct. And tell me, why did you do that? Well, um, you know, my father was in the Marine Corps, and I have a lot of family that has been in the Marine Corps. So I pretty much, I was, you know, I just really wanted to, uh, you know, support my country and uh, do something different. With my life, than the so, average average Walton. Ugh. Yeah, yeah. That's. I mean, I guess that's. I guess that's what I would say. But, but um, between um, between graduating from Walton and the military, um, did you go off to college or did you go right into the Marines? No, no. no I um, I attended uh, Universal Technical Institute in Orlando, Florida. Okay, that's before coming into the Marine Corps. And you and you got a degree from there, and then entered the Marine Corps. Yes, it was a uh, automotive technology degree. Um, let's see here, and and tell me where are you based right now? Right now, I'm in uh, Camp Bastion, Afghanistan. Camp? How do you how do you spell Bastion? B a s t i o n. And how long have you been stationed there? Uh, I've been here for a few months now. A few months, and what? Um, I can't really give you, you know. Sure, just tell me what you, you know. Only say what you should say. Tell me, um, right. what is your function? What is your job? Your role? Oh, out here I am uh, an aviation communication navigation technician, and uh, what we do is we work on uh, the avionic systems like uh, mission computers. Um, tactical air navigation, radar altimeters, identify friend or foe, and your um, and your, uh, night vision system. And your current rank is what? Corporal. You're a corporal. Okay. Yeah. Um. Well, tell me about what Afghanistan. You, you say you've been in Afghanistan a couple months. Tell me about what it's like. I've never been there. Paint a picture for me. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh is it the other Afghanistan. side of the moon? Yeah, it's it's it seems like that. Uh it's there's nothing out here. I mean you don't like where I am there's no trees, it's sand everywhere. Uh during the like right now during the daytime it gets hot but at night it gets it gets pretty cold outside. So the weather is definitely uh, it's different than be you know, instead so, of like, you know, back in the States, like right now it's probably consistently cold throughout the day. That's not the case out here. It gets pretty warm during the uh, midday. So, um, um, like a – go ahead. Well, no, keep on keep on describing. Um, there, uh, there's really not, not a whole lot out here. Um, like, you want to know, like, a typical day-to-day, like, yeah. pretty much what I do? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. So I, uh, I, we work 12 hours, 
12 hour shift out here. So, um, I, my day consisted by coming to work, uh, do 12 hours of work. And then, uh, you know, the gym, a lot, a lot of us go to the gym out here to help, you know, pass, pass time and, you know, help. it's a good stress reliever and everything like that while being out here. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we do that pretty much every day. And then, uh, you know, I mean, then you, you try to sleep, you know, when you have the available time. But, uh, that's, I mean, it's, it's pretty much, you know, our day to day out here. It's re- same thing every day. Well, well, Get up, go to work. Have you had any interaction with the locals? What is the native population like? Um, I don't get to really deal with the uh, with the locals too much. Um, that that would be more of like a, a ground side marine or something. We don't really go outside of the wire. So, I mean, we they do we do have them working on base, which you know, I, I, every single one of I, I run into, they're always polite and everything like that. So, I mean, I, I mean, it's, it's, it's a good feeling that you get from these people. So now is this your first time overseas? I, I, no, this is my second deployment. Your second deployment. So you bit, were you in Afghanistan before or somewhere else? No, I, I deployed, uh, Back in 2009, on the uh, 22nd Mew, which is uh, we, you deploy with the Navy on a boat, and uh, you hit up different. You go, you go out here. We were supporting, you know, combat operations, I guess, out in Afghanistan, patrolling off the coast and stuff like that. And you go to different ports. Like, I mean, I've visited Bahrain, Spain, Dubai, Greece, Turkey. It's a few places I went on uh, my previous deployment. So you, you, I mean, you're getting to see the world. Yes. Oh yeah. <laughs> Definitely. I never thought I, you know, it's stuff that I never thought I would get to do, and you know, I've been to a lot of places that you just you see on TV, but you're like, oh, you know, I've been there. Now you mentioned your father, who was a Marine. What is his name? Uh, my dad is also uh, Kevin Michael Mara Senior. And what does he do for a living? Uh, my dad works. Uh, he works with uh, Morgan Keegan. Okay, I, the uh, the bank based yeah, out of it. They do bonds and stuff. He, uh, Correct. Uh, he I wonder if he knows Gordon Morton. I do interviews with him occasionally. He he's a um, what a financial advisor. What do you call him? Uh, you know he. What, what is he? He is the. Uh, Managing Director of Equity Capital Sales or something like that, I believe. Don't mark my words for it. I'm not 100% sure, you know. His job is not, you know, it's not something that, you know, I really get into too much with him, you know. He gives me good advice on investing, but... Yeah, I bet he does. That, you know. That's a blue, blue chip firm. Now, tell me about, um, does your mom, is she still around? Yes, my mom is. And um, what is her name? Her name is Erica Mara. Let's spell that for me. E R I K A. And she lives. And then, um, uh, she lives with your dad, or are they separate? Yes, both my parents live down there in East Cobb. Okay. And you got any Together. siblings? Yeah. I do. I actually have a uh, a younger brother who's a year and a half younger than I am, who's also in the Marine Corps. Oh wow! And he's actually stationed out. Of, yeah, he's stationed out of uh, Twenty Nine Palms, California. Oh, he's got a little better than you do, I think. No, I don't know. <laughs> he's always like, "Gosh, he's like this place." <laughs> so, but what is yeah. uh, what is his name? His name is uh, Michael Mara. And so it sounds like your dad really inspired both you boys, his his two sons, to uh, really serve their country. Yeah, I mean, definitely. Growing up, you know, you, you know, your parents always give you advice, you know, when you're younger, but, you, you know, you just don't really, you know, you're young, you just kind of want to do your own thing. And now I definitely see, you know, my parents, both my mom and my dad were trying to set me up, my, my brother and I up for success, which in turn, I mean, all the advice that they've given us over the years has definitely played out and benefited me with my uh, success in the Marine Corps so far. 
You got any other siblings, no. or is it just your brother? No, just my brother. Now tell me, what would you, is this your first Thanksgiving away from um, from your family, or have you done this before? No, on my previous deployment, uh, I was away for Thanksgiving. Other than that, I assume you normally, like everyone else, have Thanksgiving at, in East Cobb with the family? Yes. Yeah. What Correct. would you what would you normally be doing at this time, if you were home? What would I? Oh, right now, um, yeah, uh, we usually would just be uh, you know my parents and my brother and I. And we usually my mom usually cooks a Thanksgiving dinner at home, or we would go out to a. Uh, uh, it was for years we would go to this place uh, Checkers up in uh, Perimeter, and do like a a brunch, a Thanksgiving brunch, but. Uh, and we we normally do one of those two things. So usually just spend time with family. You know, I don't get to see like, – I haven't seen my brother in over a year now. And then, you know, I get to – I like to see my parents, you know, as much as I can. So what is, uh, what it's is good the, just to get together with the family. What is a favorite Thanksgiving memory of yours? Oh, wow. <laughs> I mean – I, I just really just being, you know, just being with, you know, my family all together. So, I mean, since my brother and I joined the Marine Corps, it's been hard for, you know, everyone, like, you know, my mom and my dad and my brother and I all to be, you know, around for the holidays together. Because, you know, usually somebody's got to be doing something during the holiday or like my brother and I. So uh, definitely just being together as a family. That's got to be yeah, really tough be, to be um, to be away from family at this time. I mean, does that weigh on you a lot? You have it, a lot of downtime, you know, I think, to think about it. Yes, yeah, definitely. Um, I definitely, I, I definitely miss you know being home with family and everything like that. But at the same time, you know, I've gotten, I understand that I'm out here to support you know what we're doing out here. And uh, to me, you know, I can, I, it's okay with me, you know, knowing that we're doing good out here. And uh, so, and it, usually, you know, when I come back, you know, from like my previous deployment, we get together, you know, my brother will come home, my parents, you know, and we all get together and kind of make up for the lost times over the holiday period. So that's pretty nice, too. Now, do you have a wife and kids or are you single? I am single. Single? And um, yes. any any particular things that you've seen out there that have surprised you as you've been in Afghanistan? Or is it just a whole lot of desert and a lot of just waiting? It's a waiting. whole lot of desert, a whole lot of nothing, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you That's feel, um, true. Um, what, I mean, any, any particular uh, story that you have that you want to share? Uh, no, I really can't go into that kind of stuff. Right, right. But, uh... I guess uh, you haven't seen any action since you're inside the base. Well, I, I can't, I can't, also can't go into that Oh, either. you can't go into that either, okay. No, do you feel, do you feel supported back home by, um, Americans? Do you feel there's support for the troops and you oh, guys? definitely, definitely. You uh, we'll, I mean, since I've been out here... Uh, there, there are people that uh, send out just like care packages to any any marine, and uh, they definitely that's definitely supportive to us, you know, because they they send a lot of things that would be it's hard for us to get out here, and um, I mean people are always constantly sending something, writing letters and stuff like that. So definitely, there are people out there that are supporting us. Now, when you um, when you're not in the military, do you come back and live in East Cobb? No, I'm actually stationed out of uh, Cherry Point, North Carolina, Marine okay. Corps Air Station, Cherry Point. So that's where you're based at. So you don't have a, a church here in East Cobb that you regularly attend or anything like that? No. Okay. No. Um, well, what what are some final thoughts you'd want to tell our readers, um, you know, as we approach this Thanksgiving? Ooh. <laughs> um, Not to put you on the spot or anything. Yeah, I mean, I really don't know, you know. How how long do you think you'll, um, do you want to have a career in the military, and or do you plan I, on getting out soon, or what? 
Yeah, well, I actually just uh, re-enlisted uh, about a week ago for another uh, – for four more years. So, so well, I put a career out of it. Clearly you love what you're doing. I do. It is very, very – well, especially being out here in Afghanistan. I mean, back, you know, back in the States, you know, doing the same th- – doing what we do every day, you don't uh-huh. really get to see your hard work go, you know, uh-huh. like, you know – take place right then out here i mean you definitely see it and uh it's just very fulfilling to know you know hey you know we make that aircraft you know fly and you know we keep those keep those in the air to help us uh, support the mission out here and you believe totally in the mission and and what you're doing that's i can't i can't say you know yes or no to that okay okay i don't want to get you in trouble um yeah. Well, uh, what what Thanksgiving? As we approach Thanksgiving, what are you thankful for? Well, um, I'm, I'm I'm thankful, you know, for just being, you know, being able to, you know, do something benef- benefiting benefiting to me, you know, um, you know, having a having a good these questions, <laughs> like, I don't, I'm thankful for. I would, you know, most importantly, I would say it's good to have uh, support from uh, family and friends back in the rear, back in the, you know, in the state, you know, supporting what I do. Even if they, you know, right. they have different views on it, they still support me on it. So that, that right there is the most important thing to me. Well, I know our readers here sure do appreciate what you're doing, as do I. And uh, any final thoughts we want to add? What What did you do in Walton High School? You play any sports, football or basketball? Uh, not at Walton. I I went to Walton uh, for my junior and senior year. I went okay. to a private school prior to that, so I played sports there. And then when I came to Walton, I really didn't do any sports. Okay. I played ice hockey outside of outside of uh, school. Okay. Most of my life growing up, so that's what I did. Well, as we wrap it up, um, any final thoughts? Um, no, I mean, I just I, w- I wish you know everybody back in the you know the United States you know, happy holidays, and that's about it, you know. Well, you take it easy out there, Corporal, and I appreciate you chatting with us. This will be oh, up no on our. This will be in our paper tomorrow, and you can access it on online. We'll have it up on our website as well. Okay, and uh, what website might that be? That's at MDJ it's, uh, Marietta Journal. MDJ is in Marietta Daily Journal. MDJOnline.com. dot com. All right, excellent. I right, thank you, sir. Well, um, thank you. Henry Sergeant Allman. Uh, good, good. Good morning, sir. I guess for you, more like good evening. Um, Anyway, yes, I'm Charles you. Warner with the Union Daily Times. Nice to speak with you. Uh, nice to speak with you, sir. Okay. All right. Uh, let me go over. I got some basic information that they sent me. Uh, you're at Camp Leatherneck, Afghanistan. Uh, you're a second Marine aircraft wing forward. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, second Marine aircraft wing forward, uh, Marine Aviation Logistics Unit 40. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. And you are... Your, t- your your full rank is Gunnery Sergeant slash E7 Robert S. Allman, and your MOS Aviation Airframes Division Chief. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. All right. Okay. So you're an I- you're an you're an MOS Aviation Airframes Division Chief for the Second Marine Aircraft Wing Forward Marine Aviation Logistics Unit 40. Okay. I'm just trying to make sure I've got got all that flows right. Okay. Okay. All right, uh, sir, you're a native of Union County, is that right? A 2007 graduate of Union High School? Uh, no, I graduated in 1994. 1994, okay. Well, for some reason they put 2007 down for you. <laughs> no, I've been in the Corps for uh, a <laughs> couple, I got about, I think, six days, and I'll be in 17 years. 17 years, 17 years in the, in the Marines. And you're 35 years old yes, right sir. now, is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay, 35 years of age. Okay. Um, 
Let's see. Well, anyway, uh, what I want to talk to you a little bit about is uh, your experiences in Afghanistan, uh, Camp Levenek. Where is Camp Levenek exactly? Or can you tell me? Uh, n- no, I actually can't. Uh, okay. It's, but you can look up uh, Bastion, Camp Bastion, Afghanistan. Camp Bastion. Yeah, B-A-S-T-I-O-N. Right. Okay. And and that actually give you a, a good bit of information. Okay. All right. So just go on the web and look that up. Camp Camp Bastion. Okay. But I mean, you can't tell me if y'all like in the eastern, the southern part of Afghanistan or anything like that. Uh, no, sir. <laughs> okay. Well, that's fine. That's fine. But but that um, will give you your answers. Okay. Camp Bastion. Any particular website I need to go to to look at that? Uh. No, you you should be able to just Google. Just Google. Okay, Camp Bastion. Yeah. Right. I know it sounds kind of weird, uh, but cert- certain things they won't allow us to say. I understand completely. Because it's not a uh, secure line. Okay. Well, it's going to go in the newspaper anyway, so I guess that really isn't secure. Yeah. Anyway. Okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. And you're based out of uh, MCAS uh, Beaufort, South Carolina. That's I'm, I'm not familiar with the uh, military acronyms. MCAS, what does that stand for? Uh, uh, Marine Corps Air Station. Marine Corps Air Station. Okay. Okay. All right. This is, I believe, your second deployment to Afghanistan. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. When were you first deployed there? Uh, in 2001, I was with the uh, the group of Marines that went in and took over Kandahar from Al Qaeda. Okay, with the Marines who went into Kandahar and took it from Al Qaeda. Yes, sir. Okay. Well, can you tell us a little bit about your experiences uh, during that time? Uh, what What did you do? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. Go ahead, tell me. When did y'all get into Kandahar? Got in Kandahar uh, the end of November of 2001. Mm-hmm. Right. And uh, we came out February of 2002. Okay, 2002. I was actually deployed, uh, I was with uh, 26. Marine Expeditionary Unit. Twenty six. Is that twenty six? Just the two six, all right? Two six Marine. Yeah, two six. Marine Expeditionary Unit. Expeditionary Unit. Okay. Uh, we was uh, we was on board of the USS Bataan. We're one of the Navy ships. The USS Bataan. Okay. Uh, it's B A T A A N. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, okay. And then after the Trade Center bombings, uh, we were the closest ones, and uh, they activated us to well, not really activated us. We was already cruising around in the Mediterranean. You said then after the and, what? Uh, did what? We we was I was saying they activated us, but wasn't really activated. We was already scheduled to uh, uh-huh. deploy. Okay. I need into to go back. the Mediterranean <laughs> Sea. After the bombing, something about bombings? Oh, uh, right after the Trade Center bombings okay, in New right York? Okay, after the Trade Center bombings in New York, okay. Yes, sir. They, they sent our group of Marines in to, uh, to take over Kandahar. It was the last stronghold for Al-Qaeda. Okay. Uh, Marines into Kandahar. It was the, did you say, last stronghold of Al-Qaeda? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Um, I take it the Al-Qaeda didn't leave quietly? No, sir. Okay. Can you tell us a little bit about that? But quickly. <laughs> okay. Didn't leave quietly, but quickly. But did quickly. How long did it take y'all to run them out of Kandahar? Uh, it 
it was it was less than a day. Uh, I think the actual I can't remember the exact t- time, but it was uh it was about an hour for the stronghold. And uh, of course the the time that we was on the ground there, uh, we we always had constant resistance of people trying to come Al Qaeda trying to come back in. Okay, the time that we were on the ground there, we had constant resistance from Al-Qaeda trying to come back in. Is that right? Yes, sir. Okay. I take it you were under fire at that time yourself? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, can you uh, tell me anything about the fighting during during your time in Kandahar? Or was it just hit and get, or was it, uh, was it sustained? Um... It went in spurts. Sometimes uh, it was uh, they got these Chinese rockets. Uh, sometimes it was attacks with those. Uh, sometimes it was uh, actual gunfire from from the outer range parts, uh, a regular firefight. So it, it just went in spurts. Okay. All right. They had these Chinese rockets. Sometimes they attacked with those. Sometimes. It was what else? Uh, like sporadic gunfire. Sporadic gunfire. Okay. All right. So y'all 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 dealt with that for about uh, from the time you got there until the time y'all left in February of 2002. That was that was pretty much it. Is that right? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Um, now you're at Camp Leatherneck and. Uh, uh, you're right now. I, I'm just trying to understand. You were part of a combat expeditionary yeah. unit um, when y'all went into Kandahar. Now y'all are you're you're heading up uh, the uh, maintenance of aircraft. Is that right? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Uh, tell us about some of the uh, work you do now uh, at Camp Leatherneck. What what do y'all do exactly? I mean, well, like here, here's one question that might uh, might people might be mm-hmm. curious about. Um, the problems with the aircraft, is it more due to enemy action or more due to the environment, maybe? Uh, actually, both, and the amount of hours they fly. Okay. Okay. Both and the amount of yeah, hours we, they fly. Okay. Uh, we we fix pretty much, uh, well, for my division here, uh, I can't say exactly how many uh, actual Marines I have, but I have, uh, I guess I can, I can do, uh, well. Well, just, hmm. you can give it to me. That's the best way I could get it. <laughs> um, see, here, hmm, well over, Well, I don't want you giving away any secrets or anything. The group thing. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, trying to trying to break it down. <laughs> okay. Well, I have uh, the airframes division is comp- comprised of we have one, eight work centers. We do anything from metal work, hydraulic work, welding, uh, machining. Anything from... We do non-destructive inspections. Okay, from metal work to what else? I'm typing as we're talking. Uh, metal work, welding. Metal work, metal work welding. Uh, machinists. Hydraulic. Hydraulics. Uh, in, yes, sir. Uh, tire and wheels. Okay. Uh, uh, non-destructive inspections. Non-destructive inspections. Yes, sir. Uh, hazardous materials. Hazardous materials. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, what is a non-destructive inspection uh, we, anyway? It's um, 
basically a skill set to where uh, they detect cracks that you can't see with the eye uh, on aircraft, wells, uh, high high uh, high stress parts. They can do like liquid penetrant uh, inspections, map particle inspections, X-rays. Uh, ultrasonic and eddy current, the different techniques to, uh, you know, of course, x-rays is just like if you went into the doctor to get a chest x-ray, uh, we mm-hmm. x-ray the parts. Uh, right. Liquid penetrant is uh, a fluorescent dye that we put on the parts, and uh, through a process, we can actually have the the uh, the liquid, mag- it gets magnified by uh, black light. Mm-hmm. Do ultrasonics is uh, pretty much like a ultrasound for whenever a uh, a woman going in with a pregnancy. We right. induce uh, sound waves into the parts. Mm-hmm. Uh, magnetic particle is uh, we take a non-ferrous metal and we magnetize it so that you create a north extra north and south pole in it if it has a crack and it mm-hmm. seeps in these uh, really fine. Metal metal flakes mm-hmm. into the crack. Right. It's just uh, uh, so eddy current is much like an EKG. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you think uh, things like uh, X-rays, ultrasonic, uh, liquid penetrant, black light, uh, magnetic particles, uh, that sort of stuff, to find out any cracks or damages that are not visible to the uh, to the human eye. Is that right? Yes, sir. Uh, the black light is not a process. It's just well. It's not an actual method. It's just a process to a method. You can leave that that part off. Okay, well, liquid pen- penetrant, then. I can leave it like that. Yes, sir. Okay, magnetic particles. Okay, all these are used to find cracks and damages to, and other damage to, uh, to aircraft that cannot be seen by the human eye. Is that right? Correct. Our uh, our repairs as far as the airframes in general, uh, like I was saying, it, it can go by uh, high time on aircraft parts, uh, battle damage by uh, different weapons. The like, uh, what sort of damage are you looking at? Regular wear and tear from gunfire, from uh, from. Uh, from explosives, uh, uh, from from the elements, uh, that sort of thing, air, extended air time, all that sort of stuff, right? Yeah, actually, all of it. Uh, RPGs, uh, like you said, gunfire, just bullets, uh, e- IEDs, which is uh, uh, improvised explosive devices. Thank you. I was <laughs> yeah, uh, we do those. We actually, uh, our work center, we we have good relations uh, throughout the. Uh, the compound, the the camp, and we we actually work on a lot of the ground size uh, tanks, uh, their vehicles, trailers, and stuff like that. Because we have a lot more capability than they do, okay. so we actually go around and uh, pretty much work for everybody. We we actually designed the EOD hook, which is uh, EOD is you guys that go out that tries to disarm the IEDs and stuff and bombs. EOD. Uh, we actually designed a hook for them. Designed a hook for for the EOD. Yes, sir. EOD. What's the EOD stand for? EOD is uh, ordnance disposal. Ordnance disposal. And this hook uh, helps them uh, helps them do what? Pick up the IEDs or remove them or something? Yeah, we we give them a safe distance for actually, uh, you know, instead of them going up there and trying to separate wires uh, with their hands, you know, and then they they don't really have a uh, a large distance from the the bomb or the IED. Mm-hmm. Uh, they can actually put them on the end of these rods that extend out uh, x amount of feet, and they can separate it that way. It gives them a you know a good bit of distance away from the uh, the blast zone. Right. Uh, we made uh, <coughs> not really a technical name for them, but it's like a rake that drags uh, by the vehicles. Mm-hmm. 
and it it actually will pick up an IED uh, prior to the, the vehicle getting in the area. We help design some of those and build them. So this is this hook that acts like a rake almost, picking up an IED before a vehicle reaches it. Is that right? Yes, sir. Okay, but okay, and those rods that, uh, if I'm understanding this correctly, this uh, hook, they hook it onto the front of their vehicles and they use it to pick it up like that, or do the b bomb ordnance teams use it separately? What? what yeah, the, the actual, the member of the team will use it. Uh, it just in their hands, if you if you could think of kind of like a telescoping pole, mm -hmm. sort of. It is stand out X amount of feet and it has the hook on the end, and they actually use it with their hands. It's still out exposed in the area, mm -hmm. but it just, uh, you know, certain certain bombs, they only have a uh, like a kill radius of X amount of feet. Mm -hmm. So we try to use that to extend out to get them out of that kill zone. Get them out of the kill zone. Okay, this is for the, uh, the, the teams. And is there a separate uh, thing you put, like that rake thing you put on front of the vehicles? Is that separate from this hook, or is that the yeah, same thing? Yeah, that's separate. Okay. It's separate. It's it's uh kind of kind of the same. Well, the, the actual hook I'm talking about uh, it's small enough that they can separate two wires. Okay. The 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 rake on front of the vehicles they're actually they're huge. Uh, if you think like a kind of like a bulldozer got the bucket way out front, mm -hmm. and but it's actually extended out a little further, so it actually set the IED off before you get in the area. Right. Okay. All right. I see. Okay. All right. So y'all basically designed these two things for them, the hook for the uh, ordinance people to to, uh, to, to, t to deal with the IEDs and keep them out of the kill zone, and the rakes to go in front of the vehicle so it sets off the bombs before the vehicles actually get there. Is that right? Right. Okay. Well, that's, that sounds mighty handy. Mighty handy. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> and so, in so basically, if I'm understanding this correctly, in addition to repairing aircraft, which by that means, I guess, would be uh, helicopters and jets and stuff like that, am I correct? Yes. Okay. Y'all also repair uh, uh, ground vehicles as well. You help the uh, the other teams repair their ground vehicles, and you design this stuff to help keep well help keep American soldiers and Marines alive. Exactly. Fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah. Anyway, I actually had some guys that was using it, uh, and the very next day they was out in the field using it, and they come back thanking us because you know it just made a world of difference for them. Came back the next day and thanked us for it. It made a world of difference for them. Is that right? Yes, sir. Fantastic. I take it you're saying the, these devices, the rake and the hook, these were the guys that came in and thanked you for them. Is that right? Yes, sir. Okay, good. Fantastic. Um, well, let me ask you this. Uh, some folks might want to know this. I know you were you had to do the fighting in Kandahar with the Marine the Marine Expeditionary Unit. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay, that was the... the t by the way, when you said 26, Marine, is that uh, 26 TH or 26 ND or just 26? Uh, 26 TH. Okay, 26 Marine Expeditionary Unit. That was back in 2001-2002. Okay. Um, do you yeah. do all come under a lot of fire at Camp Leatherneck from the Taliban or the Al-Qaeda? Uh, truthfully, because uh, this is my, my third tour, uh, it don't seem like a lot to me, <laughs> but we do we do get, I guess, our fair share. Uh, seem like a lot. This is my third tour, so it don't seem like a lot to me. But we do. Did you just say but we do? We do what? Uh, we we do get a fair share. Get a fair share. Okay. All right. Um, have you had a lot of interaction with the locals, the uh, the local Afghan people? Well, yeah, yeah, they, yeah. Well, how? how they actually what, do. What has been your experience? Uh, we actually they? have. Go ahead. We actually, uh, my my particular division, 
we work a lot hand to hand with the uh the British uh Air Force, the Navy. Okay. British Air Force oh. and Navy. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Well yeah, okay. pretty much uh, all of all of the branches of service for the United States and also for the British and they do have uh Navy and Marines. Service or branches of the services for the United States and the British. Is that right? Okay. Correct. So y'all work with them. When, when I was talking about the locals and whatnot, I was talking about the, the Afghans. I'm, I'm taking it you don't have a lot of interaction right. with the Afghans these days. Uh, no, actually we do. Okay. We do. It's uh, it's pretty minimal. Uh, no, we we have several several groups that uh actually train them to become uh, Afghan soldiers. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, there's uh there's actually Afghans uh employed around different camps. Okay. Employed around different camps. Okay. Um, I guess the question that I'm really wanting to know is um, the the Afghans um, are they glad we're there? Or do they not like us? Do they just put up with us? Uh, what what's been your experience? No, uh, they they're actually very thankful. They they really are. Um, you know, if I'm just sitting here uh, coming here and you know and trying to pardon trying to help out their country in general. It's uh. They they do a lot a lot of stuff for the communities okay. for the for the local okay. areas and all. Okay, so they're very thankful. Uh, we're here. very thankful. We're here trying to help their help out their country. Is that right? Yes. Okay. All right. So, so basically, they are ha- they're happy to have us here, and uh, and uh, that we're trying to help them. So, okay, well that's good. So yes. Lot, so there's a lot of debate in this country right now about whether we should be in Afghanistan or not anymore. And I mean, you know, and if the people want us there, it seems like it's it's not a bad idea to be there. So anyway, that's what, I mean. That's, yeah. That, that, that would seem that way anyway. But you're saying that they are, that the ones you've interacted with uh, do seem to be very thankful that we're there. They do. And if you would ask me that question. Ten years ago, I would have had. I wouldn't have thought that way, <laughs> but I didn't have the same type of uh, uh, relationships or anything either. You know, you a whole, whole different type of uh, mode. Type of mode. So pretty much, when you were having to fight fight in Kandahar, you would not have said that they were very welcome to have us. But now, ten years later, <laughs> and, pardon. Yes, first. yes. Okay. But ten years later, and, th- and you're saying this is your third deployment to Afghanistan? I thought this was just your second. This is my second to Afghanistan. Uh, uh, I'm saying uh, third combat. Uh, second to Afghanistan and one in Iraq. Okay. Okay, second to Afghanistan. Uh, okay, my apologies. I got a little confused. Okay. I'm sorry. But anyway, so ten years later, uh, and working with the Afghans themselves, they do seem to be happy that we're there. Okay. Um Anyway, you said you also served a combat tour in Iraq. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, where were you in Iraq? Um, I, actually, I was all over. Uh, my 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 job at the time there, I just uh, I bounced around the whole country. I was in Al Assad, TQ. Uh, there's a place called Bob Duke, KV. It's a whole, you know, you got different uh, strategic points throughout the country. Mm-hmm. And my job was basically I, I rambled from one to the other. One to the other. Were you in a combat unit at the time? I was. Okay. All right.
What led you to join the Marine Corps? I mean, how, how, you've been in 17 years. I, uh, <laughs> what led you to join the Marine Corps? Um, it's, there, well, it's a hard one for me to answer. I was, uh, I didn't even know what the Marine Corps was, to be honest. Okay. I, uh, I was working at Milliken, matter of fact, the Gillespie plant, and, uh, you know, working the rotating shift there, and had a, had a newborn son, and knew I wanted to, the pretty much just do something with my life, and, 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 you know, make, uh, his and my wife's, uh, life a lot better. To do something with to do something with my life and make and what'd you say about your wife and son? Uh make my wife and son's life better. My wife son's life better. Okay, so you joined the Marine Corps. Okay, and apparently you've liked it. You've yes. been in there 17 years. Yeah, yeah, I can't, I can't complain. It's been very good to me. Well, 17 years later, you got a newborn yeah. son. He, what, what is your son's name? I may I ask. Oh no, no, that's uh, when, I oh, uh, when I joined. I had a newborn son. I actually have three kids now. Three children. Uh, now. Matter of fact, that son is seventeen now. Okay. Well, that was was and his was, name was is. I was trying to make. He's seventeen now, and he could he could join the Marine Corps himself. Would you encourage him to do so? Uh, he he's actually wanting to join. Um, I want him to go to college first and come in as an officer. But you know, it's it's his choice and. If he wanted to join, then uh, you no, know, I wouldn't be upset of, upset about it. Uh, it's been good. It's a, it's a brotherhood that I'm grateful for. So I I couldn't really knock it. I, I wouldn't have any uh, heartaches about it. Wouldn't have any heartaches for it. Is that right? Right. Three children now. He's actually wanting to join, wanting to go. To, I want him to go to college first, come in as an officer. Uh, but it's his choice. Is that right? Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. What's uh, what's your family's names? I mean, uh, if you want to share that, I mean, I've got. They gave me your mother's phone, yeah. your mother's yeah. name and phone number, and I can maybe call her and talk to her too. But uh, yeah. is your family living down at Buford with you? Oh, well, they're not in Afghanistan with you. I'm pretty they certain. Are. But I mean. They're down in Buford. No, they're not here. Yeah, okay. they're in Buford. Okay, family and family. Uh, my wife is Kinsley Allman. Okay, hold on a second. Buford. K I N S L E I G H. Kinsley, what was the last name again? Allman, A L M A N. Oh, I thought you gave me her maiden name. That's why I was asking. Oh, like I'm Kinsley sorry. Oh, uh, no. Okay, Kinsley Allman. Uh, mm hmm. Okay. And um, what's your children's my, name? My my oldest boy is Kane Alman, K A I N E. K A I N E Alman. Okay. Yes. My daughter is Kylie. It's K Y L E I G H. K Y L I G H. L E I. Oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah, it's all right. Okay. And uh, my youngest son is Jace, J-A-C-E. J-A-C-E, okay. Good, good. Okay. All right. Um, anyway, uh, how long are you going to be in Afghanistan on this deployment? I mean, when did you get to Afghanistan on this deployment? Uh, I got here, uh, let's see. See how I can actually put it. Uh, well, see, I think, I think 
I think I remember when school started. I actually got here before school started. Okay. So it was um, early. So it was maybe sometime in uh, in July or or, or August or so, or June or something like that. Uh, the second one. <laughs> August. It was uh, right around August first. Okay. First around the first of August. And uh, how long is this deployment going to be? Uh, this still to be determined. Oh, and by the way, when you were deployed to Iraq, what year was that? Or was it more than one year? Uh, 2005. 2005, Iraq. All right. Any uh, message you'd like to give to uh, to those here in Union? Uh, any, any any words or anything like that? I know you probably have contact with your family, but any anything you'd like to say to your friends yeah. or people who knew you from high school? Mm -hmm. Um, really, yeah, well, you know, of course, I like to uh, put something in there uh, to my mother, wife, and kids, you know, hey, and I love them, uh, to friends and uh, people of Union, I, I appreciate the support over the years, you know, I've always, uh, when I come back home, you know, it's, it's always been terrific, you know, everybody... It's nice to see familiar faces also. Uh, yeah, I appreciate the support over the but years. But I, I would... When I come home... What now? What about when you come home? Uh, you know, it's just always wonderful to see uh, friendly faces, familiar faces. See friendly faces, familiar faces. Okay. Um, I, w I would actually like to uh, put in there that, you know... My heart goes out to the Bruinton family. Okay. I, I did get wind of uh, a little bit of that. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. And uh, I, I did I did see somebody shot me an email telling me uh, I guess they just recently did a big uh, I guess charity event like a 5K. Yes, it is. In in honor of uh, his family. Mm-hmm. And you know that, that's. It's really awesome that you know the community is getting behind them to help them out. The community has gotten behind them, helping them out. Okay, that's good. I was going to ask you about that if you'd heard about him, and um, but anyway, so <laughs> yeah. you beat me to the punch. Anyway, <laughs> okay, yeah, uh, all right, but. Um, Anyway, and so you give your love to your mother here who still lives here in Union and to your family who are living in Beaufort now. Um, anyway, yeah. uh, anyway, is there anything else you'd like to talk about before we go? I know you're probably busy. Um, I'm, I'm actually, uh, I, I pretty much live here. <laughs> I hardly ever leave. My Marines always trying to get me to go home <laughs> or go back to the uh, to my room. Right. But, okay. Uh, See, huh. I got a I got a bunch of friends that's uh, doing music in in Union, mm -hmm. and uh, if I could give give them a, a shout out, we're uh, doing great things with that. Trying to, uh, I guess, kind of say uh, put Union on the map with a lot of positive positive uh, things going on. And I guess I could just put that as uh, uh, it's Noise Records. Noise Records. That's what they're going by. Yes, sir. Okay. Shout out to them for putting Union on the map. A lot of positive. What'd you say? A lot of positive. What? A lot of positive things going uh, on, or something? I, I, yeah, yeah, something in that nature. Were you in a band or anything? It says on, and I saw the information they sent me. You, uh, you write music or you compose music. Is that correct? Let's see. Well, I'm uh, actually uh, I help them guys out. I've been uh, helping them out for years since uh, you know I travel around a lot to to different countries and different states. Right. Uh, some just uh, kind of tied in with them, help them out with that type of stuff. I guess marketing and all. 
Okay. Uh, help his friend with marketing because of all the traveling you've done. Is that right? Yes. Okay. So your friends, who 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 makes up Noise Records here in Union County? Um, T.J. Jeter. T.J. Uh, Jeter. Yes. Uh, David Scott. David Scott. Yes, sir. S C O T. Uh, S C O T T. Okay. There's two uh, ways to spell it. <laughs> yeah. T J Jeter David. And uh, Drew, Drew. Drew Owens. Owens. Okay, Drew Owens. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. So collectively, mm-hmm. they, they are Noise Records. Is that right? Yes. Sir. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, normally, what I do when I write a story about someone is I try to call them back and go over it with them to review it with them. If I can, mm-hmm. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that with you, uh, unless there's some way I could okay. reach back through and call you or anything like that. Okay. Well, I'm going to work this story up and okay. I'll email you a version of it so you can take a look at it and just uh, just get it back to me and let me know okay. if there's any problems. Okay. It sounds terrific. All right. Well, Gunnery Sergeant Allman, uh, thank you for speaking with me. And I uh, hope you like the story I write. How are you today? I'm doing good. How are you? Wonderful. What shall I call you? Can I just call um, you Lance Corporal Lance. Short? Is that is that how you're addressed? Yes, that's fine. Great. I've got I've got ten questions for you, and I've only got fifteen minutes, so I'm going to jump right in. Is that okay with you? It sounds good to me. How long have you been in the military? I joined in April of 2010, so I'll hit my two-year mark in April. Okay. What prompted you to join? I joined, well, I was in fifth grade when 9-11 happened, and that kind of inspired me that I wanted to come make a difference and give back to my country that I'm thankful to live in and just to be part of something great. Did you say fifth grade or sixth grade? Fifth grade. Five? Fifth grade? Yes. Okay, how old are you? I just turned 21. Okay. What has been your most rewarding military experience so far? So far, just being out here, uh, this is the main reason why I joined, was to be able to deploy and just being out here and making a difference, serving with people that I've gotten very close to and learning what it's like to be part of a team and to work together to accomplish things that need to be accomplished. Yes. How has been how has being in Afghanistan changed the way you think? It's changed the way I think because you realize how many things back home you take for granted out here when you have to go without things and not being able to communicate as much as you want to with family and friends and just being away from everything you know and love. Um, Simple things that, you know, if you're out of something, you can just run down to the store and get it. It's not always available out here. So pretty much for me, just I realize how many things that I take for granted and you become thankful for the little things in life. Yes. How is your family getting along with you out of the country? Are are they worried? Um, I try to tell them not to worry. Um, naturally, they're going to be concerned um, just because we're in this country, but um, I try to keep everything positive and let them know that I'll be home soon and we're safe. It's not that bad out here. Um, so they're okay with it. Um, it's gotten better with time. Uh, we've been out here for about four and a half months already, so it's gotten a little bit easier. And we're fortunate to have the phone and the Internet sometimes, too, so communication is all right. Uh, how often are you able to communicate with your family? Um, I try to call home like once a week, maybe once every two weeks. Um, it's hard because there's a lot of people that I'd like to be able to contact. Um So usually I talk to my husband and my parents usually once a week, every two weeks. I see. Are you able to email more than that? 
Yes. Um, I can get on the email pretty much every day. Um, just sometimes it's slower and it doesn't always go through. But the communication is not too bad, like I said. Okay, now you're married. Do you have children? No, we just got married in June before I came out here. So um, we don't have children, but it's still really hard being away from my husband. Is he here in Broadhead? He's from Albany, but he's in the Air Force, so he's stationed out in Washington, D.C. Oh, I see. And he's in the Air Force, and you're in the Marines, right? Yes, correct. Okay. Now, how long will you be in Afghanistan? We should be coming home sometime in February. Okay. So we only got about two more months left. What does What does your job entail? Um, I work for uh, HMH 464. It's a heavy marine helicopter squadron, and our missions are um, transporting cargo and as well as other ground troops. We just pretty much support the ground troops. Um, and then I work in maintenance admin. So You work in what, did you say? Oh, maintenance. Maintenance admin. Uh, maintenance administration? Mm-hmm. Is that what you're telling me? Yes. Okay, you're calling it admin. That's the way you call it there? Yes. Do you do you fly? Um, I haven't yet, but I'm going to before we leave here. So, so you're trained to fly. That's one of my – That's. You're, I'm not personally, huh? but we're going on – like they're letting everybody else go on flights now towards the end, um, so I'm still waiting my turn for that. We'll be riding in a helicopter, not flying it. Correct. But what's a typical day like for you? What do you, time do you get up? What do you do? Um, well, we switch off between night and day crew every month. So every other month I'll be night crew. Every other month I'll be day crew. And we usually work 12 to 14 hour days, seven days a week. And right now I'm night crew. So I usually get up about four in the afternoon. And I probably get home from work around nine in the morning. Mm -hmm. So. What do you do at work? Pretty, um, pretty much keep track of all the inspections and components and maintenance for all the aircraft. And when a when a bird goes down, we find like we track the components and find out why. And pretty much just all all the upkeep that needs to take place on the aircraft. Okay. Now, what has the military prepared you to do once you get out? Um, I really haven't thought that far, but it's helped me become very self-motivated, so whatever I do choose to do, I shouldn't have a problem with as far as, like, work ethic and staying motivated. It's gotten me in really good physical shape, so keep me to be healthy when I get out, and I look forward to going to school eventually. I want to be a firefighter when I get out, so hopefully... That, that'll be down the road for me, too. When do you plan to get out of the military? I haven't decided yet because it's been it's really hard being in a opposite branches with my husband, so it'll kind of depend on how difficult it is to get stationed together because right now we're stationed, I'm in Cali, and he's on the East Coast, so we're trying to get based closer together, so it'll depend on that. I'm in what, Cali? What does that mean? Uh, Miramar, San Diego, California. Oh, you're in California. You mean that's your home base? I understand. Yes. Uh, let me. I've got. I've got two more important questions, but then I want to get back to this for a minute. But let, I'm scared we're going to run out of town. How, uh, has serving your country changed the way that you view the United States? Yes, very much. Um, especially since we've been out here because you see what the other cultures are like and what other people are like and uh, things that American, like the people of America take for granted, like I said before, um, our jobs, like before when I had a job, I didn't appreciate it as much, but you come out here and you see the little jobs that people do to make money and to make a living to provide for their family and you go back to our country and you just see how fortunate everybody is 
and just what all we really do have. We're a very, very lucky country to live the way we do, and just people are treated the way they're treated. It's, it's just been a real eye-opener for me. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, do you have a Thanksgiving message? This isn't going to be in in the paper until a week from tomorrow because we missed the deadline for tomorrow. So it's not really a Thanksgiving message per se, but do you have a holiday message that you would like to give to people back home reading the Broadhead Independent Register? Yes, I would. Um, I'd just like to say to everyone back home, just thanks for, I know how many people are supporting me out here and supporting us out here and what we do. And just know that that is very, very much appreciated, and that's what keeps us going out here is everybody's support back home. And we love each and every one of you guys. That's a beautiful. Now, as, with the time we have left, I want to go back to your husband. Now, he's from Albany, so apparently you two met before each of you signed up for the military. Is that right? Yes. Actually, we met in the recruiting office. I was originally going to join the Air Force, so that's how we met um, the last part of high school. So. I see. So, so, but at that point, it didn't look like there was a relationship possibility, so you went ahead and joined the Marines, or what made you change your mind and join the Marines instead? Well, there we still, like, we had a relationship back then, and that's why it was a hard decision for me to switch over, but... uh I ended up having to wait. The waiting list for the Air Force was way too long. It, they told me it was going to be like eight months before I was able to join, and the Marine Corps gave me like 15 days. They told me I could go to boot camp, so that's why I took that opportunity. But it was a hard decision to make just because I knew he was in the Air Force, and I, there was a lot of good things about the Air Force that I liked. So it's been difficult, but we're making it. Sure, sure. So you've been married just about coming up on six months then this this Christmas time, huh? Yes, ma'am. All right. Well, uh, th- th- those are the basic questions that I had. I'm going to be calling your family if that's okay with you when we get off the phone. Is that okay with you? Yes, that'd be great. Okay. Tell me, is I've got I've got uh, Joel Newman. Is that your dad? Yes, Neiman. Actually, it's N I E M A N, but oh, he's probably okay. the one that'll be home. Okay, so Joel Neiman. Yep. Okay, uh, let me yep. just look here really quick and see. Uh, so that's your dad. Yes. That Joel Neiman is your father. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so as so he's he had already called the newspaper and said he had some extra materials, um, and then I got a great picture from. Uh, of you standing outside a helicopter, two of them really nice ones, uh, that one of you smiling okay. and one of you not smiling. But uh, do you have a preference? I uh, Would you rather have the smiling picture or the non-smiling picture? Um, whichever one you think looks better. Okay, I'll let you so decide. Really nice. What else can you say about, uh, you know, I, I suppose somebody's going to tell us we can't talk anymore. Is that how this is going to end? Is someone going um, to probably say time is up? Um, I'm not sure. There's a timer on this phone. It says like 16:40 right now. Okay. So, but I think it started before we actually got connected. Okay. Well, uh, uh, before if we get connected, my name's Mindy Moore, and I'm writing your story, and uh, it'll be fun for uh, fun for your friends and your family to see that in the paper next week. So I thank you in advance for for uh, your time and your help this morning. Um, is there anything else that you would like to say? And I know we're probably just going to get cut off, and, and I'll just say bye right now, but let's keep talking till they till they tell us we can't. What, um, what kinds of things are you seeing over there that you never, ever expected to see? Um, not really anything that I didn't expect, because back home, you know, you always see photos in the newspaper and video, so it's kind of what I expected. Um, as far as I didn't know there'd be as many, um, like different cultures on the base. That's kind of, cause I stay, I pretty much stay on base, um, for what we do. We don't go outside of the wire at all, but, um, just a lot of different cultures and I don't know, people just are, it's different over here, cultures but on not the, really anything. Are, are they all U.S. military people with different cultures or are they, are they people from from the land on the base? 
Um, there's people from, like, there's um, Afghan, I don't know if you would say native, but then there's people from other countries, too, as well as other militaries. Like, we have the British military, uh, the Bahrainian military, and there's a couple different branches that are also stationed here on this base, and as well as, like, our Army, Navy, Air Force, all of our military, so. Oh, really? So you have all branches out there. The You have all branches of mil the military on that base right where you are. Yes, ma'am. you say Bahrainian or Iranian? Bahrainian. You've got the British uh, military, then you said I, we've got the, I, I couldn't hear your word. Did you say Bahrainian or Iranian? Yes, Bur I think I'm pretty sure it's the British and the Bahrainian. Those are the two that I've seen, but I'm sure there's probably other other countries as well. How about the weather? How is how are you holding up in the weather? What's it like? Um, the weather's changed since we got here. When we got here, it was really really hot. Um, like some days we would get like 110, 113. And it would stay like that. It'd cool off a little bit at night, but it was really, really hot, dry heat. And now it's more like, more like back home. It's cooled down a lot. Like it gets really cold at night, and they say it's only going to get colder. But during the day, it's usually pretty mild still, and it hardly ever rains, or it hasn't yet. We've only had one, one or two rains since we've been here. Okay. Wow. That's that's interesting. Or how about food? Or do you eat well? Yes, the food's not bad. I really can't complain about the food. Um, we get a lot of a lot of variety, and everything's pretty fresh, so can't really complain. Are you getting mostly American type food? Yes. So nothing. You aren't. Are you? Do you have the opportunity to to sample cultural food? A little bit. They have like different nights um, where they'll serve different kind of foods, like at the chow hall and stuff, but they have a Pizza Hut here on base, and it doesn't taste anything like Pizza Hut back home. That's all I can say about that. <laughs> I bet. Mm -hmm. I bet. Um, okay. Well, I feel like I've covered everything. Is there anything that you would like to say that maybe I didn't uh, prompt with a question? Um, no, not really. Just can't wait to come home. It's the hardest thing about being out here is being away from family and everybody you love yes and you won't be able to come home for christmas i take it no nope. you will actually won't be able to come home at all till february right right okay when well, that'll that'll have that'll have had you there for a six month tour of duty yes it'll be actually a little bit over six months by the time we get back to the states okay and your home base is where in california san diego did you say Yes, ma'am. Do you know what you're going to do when you get back here? Um, as far as work-wise, it'll be the pretty much the same thing we do out here, just not as long of days, mm -hmm. shorter days, and uh, we'll have weekends off, which will be nice. Yeah, that that will be nice. And how long did you sign up for? My contract is for four years. Four years. Right now. Okay. So um, you don't expect any other deployments once you get back to San Diego? Oh, yes. Our unit should be deploying again within the next year. Oh, so I we'll be back out here again. Oh, I see. Okay. So you're just coming home for a short time and then getting get, going right back? Most likely, yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I just want to say thank you. Uh, this was a great interview. I think the story is going to be wonderful. And I really don't have anything else if you want to say goodbye. Um, uh, I just appreciate it, and I, it, this was a lot of fun for me to get a call and see if I wanted to do this. So this is great. Well, thank you. I appreciate it, too. It was fun for me, too. <laughs> I'm so glad. Will you take good care and Merry, Merry Christmas. I should say Happy Thanksgiving first and Merry Christmas, and we'll be glad to get you home. Well, thank you, and you, too. You have a good holiday. All right. Take care. All right. Bye Thank bye. you. And welcome to the program, and we are so honored to have with us today Lieutenant Colonel Chandler Seagraves. He is an EA-6B uh, Prowler pilot and the commanding officer for Marine Tactical Electronic Squadron 1 out of Cherry Point, the Banshees. 
and uh, he is uh, deployed out of Cherry Point and, and joining us today live from Afghanistan. Uh, Lieutenant Colonel, welcome to the program. Thanks, Ben. It's great to be talking to you and everybody back in eastern North Carolina. First of all, how long have you been deployed to Afghanistan this time? Well, we uh, we just got here on the 8th, so 10 days now. Right. Yes, VMAQ-4 just arrived uh, back in Cherry Point, and so we welcome them back home. But uh, uh, So you're fresh there now. Is this a first or second deployment to Afghanistan for you, or...? Personally, this is my first to Afghanistan, uh, but the squadron itself has been here twice. Um, most of us are now making that jump over from Iraq. I did two deployments there and now uh, starting to pick up the mission here in Afghanistan. Well, uh, let me just take a moment to say congratulations. I understand that uh, your unit, the VMAQ-1, received Secretary of Defense a level award for aircraft maintenance. That's a, that's a big honor. We did, and we just got the word uh, tonight. I haven't fully verified this, but uh, I think we got it on pretty good source that we actually won the maintenance award for the entire DOD. Oh, excellent. Hey, that's even better. That's great news to hear. Uh, yep. Tell me a little it's, bit about uh, The mean. name of it is the Phoenix Award that the Secretary of Defense puts out, and they, you know, it's obviously across all branches of the military, so... Uh, pretty uh, pretty prestigious award. Our our Marines and sailors do some pretty amazing work, and and we're recognized for it. Uh, and uh, sir, that is uh, pretty amazing work. Tell us a little bit about your unit and what something like that would mean to them. Well, it's uh, you know that specific award. You know, having that uh, uh, level of attention for you know the the work we've had to do we got uh basically brand new weapon systems in the aircraft and uh so all of these marines and sailors have had to relearn everything that they've they've known since uh basically the 60s yeah. on this aircraft so uh hours and hours actually over a hundred hours each you know through classroom instruction and then uh almost having to learn to fix things all over again uh you know the old methods didn't necessarily work to keep this airplane in the sky and and supporting our troops over here so uh pretty pretty prestigious award uh they only chose five units out of the entire d o d and then uh the 16th, the evening of the 16th, out of those five units, they picked what they call the Phoenix Award winner. And uh, again, I don't want to say it 100%, but I'm, I got it on good good terms that, that we won it as the uh, overall. So again, very, very excited and proud of these Marines. Well, and, and as well you should be. Uh, I understand, uh, actually, VMAQ-1 has been has received a number of awards over its history, and, uh, and it's just, uh, again, another great uh, addition to that, to those rankings. Now, uh, tell me a little bit about um, your uh, crew members. You said uh, uh, buying, uh, flying the EA-6B Prowler there with all the new gear. They've had to do a lot of relearning. Uh, that's a pretty extensive training and, and has to be um, – uh, just uh, precise. It is, and I tell you, it's uh, uh, old guys like me probably don't pick it up as quick as these young kids do uh, nowadays, but uh, the technology leaps that we've now gone to with this new weapon system, you know, these young aviators eat it up and uh, are continually figuring out new ways, you know, uh, through their own ingenuity of employing the weapon system and and uh, being able to commute communicate with the the forces on the ground and uh, provide better support than we ever have been able to in the past. So it's it's pretty amazing to watch, you know, some of the brightest minds here, uh, you know, again with these young sharp aviators who are uh, really digging into the books and then you know, being creative with, hey, you know, we can do this with the weapon system uh, now. Um, so pretty uh, 
pretty proud of them as well and uh flying flying some pretty long sorties and and uh doing good things making sure a lot of these uh young soldiers and all of our coalition partners marines make it home safe and in one piece now i don't want you to say things that you can't say so uh just uh let me ask you i understand that um uh much of the second marine uh, second mall forward is at camp leatherneck but you're in a different spot is that right we are. We are uh, currently located in at in Bagram, which is up in the uh, northeastern portion of Afghanistan, and it's unique in its own way too. You know, being Marines, but yet we're uh, we're here on an Air Force uh, controlled airfield, and and the Army runs all the facilities. So, you know, using a lot of uh, joint skills to embed ourselves in with these units and and get the support that we need uh you know to be able to continue to carry on the mission uh so uh unique in that effect as well uh we still keep keep in contact with all of our our uh you know marine counterparts down in the south and obviously get down there to support them uh as much as we possibly can well, it's like joint strike fighters without the F-35, as you're all working together. That's it. And, you know, the, you know, one big team, one fight here. And as we continue to move on, you know, it, it seems to be more and more regular uh, that we end up working, you know, with, with all of our other branches of service, uh, much like, you know, the uh, squadron actually just came out of Aviano, Italy, and was supporting the uh, Operation uh, Unified Protector in Libya for the past two months. Right. So, uh, again, there we were part of a NATO force. So you're working with all, uh, you know, multiple nations in, uh, you know, being able to, to take the, the fight to the enemy and then, uh, you know, eventually lead to the uh, fall of the Gaddafi regime. We are speaking with Lieutenant Colonel Chandler Seagraves, who is the commanding officer for VMAQ-1, Marine Tactical Electronic Warfare Squadron 1. Uh, and uh, how would you describe your mission as VMAQ-1 as opposed to, say, other units? Well, ours is... Uh you know, um, very, uh, the technology that we use to be able to deny the enemy use of the electronic spectrum, uh, you know, is, is, uh, you know, uh, for lack of better words, almost, you know, uh, futuristic, um, you know, being able to, to keep them from, you know, utilizing, uh, well, the the spectrum itself right. to exactly. to be able to bring harm to our coalition forces. Yeah, uh, yeah. Again, and this is part of the great advancements that have happened uh, with uh, EA six B Prowler too uh, over the years. It's uh, been in quite a quite a uh, vehicle for for the Marine Corps and for many other units as well. But let's. Um, I, I wanted to ask you since you are in uh, Bagram in a different place, and we ask we've asked everybody I think at Camp Leatherneck about this. And I know it seems like a silly question, but people back here kind of want to know these things. Uh, how's the food? I tell you, Ben, <laughs> the the food is outstanding. Uh, it I I never. Uh, I don't think I have had a day or a meal yet that I haven't been impressed. It is amazing what they do with food over here. <laughs> uh, well, we always ask that question. Tell you one of the, yeah, one of the unique things. I didn't mean to cut you off, Ben. Uh, we actually eating dinner tonight. Uh, one of the individuals that runs one of the chow halls actually brought some bread out that was actually made by a. Uh, uh, Afghani local woman that has been hired to uh, work on base in the Chow Hall. So, you know, you get some of that interaction as well. And and uh, I got to say, I uh, hope my wife doesn't hear this, but that's probably the best piece of bread I've had quite some time. <laughs> uh, again, we are, are speaking with Lieutenant Colonel uh, Chandler Seagraves from VMAQ1. And 
Uh, Colonel, again, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Where are you from originally? How long have you been in the Marine Corps? Well, funny you ask that. Uh, I am a New Bern uh, boy, graduated from New Bern High School, and uh, uh, my father was a career Marine, so I moved around pretty much uh, all my life, but uh, New Bern's home, and uh, having graduated uh, right there, so uh, makes life easy. Uh, I've been in the Marine Corps for almost 19 years now, and... uh, seems like it was yesterday that I joined uh so a lot of opportunity and and uh you know good memories what would you tell New Bern High School graduates now about the Marine Corps and about uh, maybe choosing a military service uh, career yeah well the the opportunities are phenomenal i mean who would who would think that you know some some young kid that, uh, you know, probably wasn't, uh, as most of my teachers might attest to, uh, not, the, not the smartest one in the class, but who would have who thought that you'd get the opportunity to go, you know, fly jet aircraft and, and uh, you know, be in the missions uh, that we're getting to do and, and fight the war over here for our country, so... Uh, probably the biggest thing I would tell them is, you know, if they're interested in it, they can do it. If they set their sights on it and, you, uh, you know, push, uh, work very, very hard, and before they know it, they'll be flying some of this technology and doing what we're doing. Lieutenant Colonel Seagraves uh, joining us from Afghanistan. And, um, you know, we have actually in this area, we have a Seagraves Aviation. Is that any relation? No, I didn't. Uh, I didn't know that, but uh, I'll have to check. Yeah, uh, maybe, maybe they uh, maybe they need a Sea Graves over there working for them. Do you? Uh, when did you first fly? When was your first time you got uh, behind the stick? First time I ever flew was when I joined the Marine Corps. Other than obviously commercial aircraft, uh, so you know, uh, didn't have any flight experience whatsoever prior to joining. What was that like the first time uh, you taking your very first lesson as a young Marine and getting in, into a, a trainer and, and taking off? Pretty awesome. Uh, you know, some some stress and nerves there, but, you know, once you get over that aspect of it, how, how amazing, uh, you know, it is that they're actually giving you a set of keys to one of these things and letting you <laughs> take it out. So uh, a lot of hard work and effort. And then, uh, you know, culminating when you finally make it through all that training and you actually get to, you know, instead of practice, you get to go play. And uh, that's what it's about, what we're doing right now. EA-6B Prowler, pretty amazing aircraft. When did you first start flying that? Uh, Let's see, Ben, you're taking me back. Um, (laughs) I want to say... 95, 1995 was the first time. And, of course, all Marine uh, Prowler EA-6B guys go through Whidbey Island, Washington for our training and then uh, transfer, you know, all the way across back to Cherry Point. And yes, uh, all the Marine EA-6B Prowlers are Cherry Point, I understand. So is that, is that, was that a choice to go that so you could be near home? No, not really. Uh just kind of kind of happened to play out that way. Yeah. Do you have family back here? I don't. My uh family now lives in uh southern Alabama. Mm-hmm. Uh but obviously very familiar with the area and uh they get up there as much as possible to visit with the family. Uh, well, again, it's a uh, uh, an honor to speak with you today as we uh, have been talking to Marines and Sailors for some time now with 2nd Marine Air Wing Forward in Afghanistan and in other places, too. Uh, is, the, is the flight um, parameters or the territory or horizons, are they different in Bagram? I don't know them much about the geography than they would be at Camp Leatherneck. Yeah, it's considerably different in Bagram. We're up in the northern portion where the, you know, mountains are twelve to 15,000 feet. Uh, 
we sit at almost a mile above sea level, so very similar to a uh, you know Denver uh, um, mm-hmm. environment. There, you know, feels a lot like you're in Denver. Uh, it's getting pretty cool here in the evenings. The days right now have been pretty nice, but you know, as soon as that sun starts to drop behind a mountain, it gets pretty cool rapidly. Uh, a lot of snow on the mountains, and uh, we haven't had any down here yet, but I've been told it's coming. Yeah, yeah indeed. Uh, so you have just been there for 10 days or so, then you were, uh, were you here for the Marine Corps birthday? We were not. We were uh, actually, well, we were here in Bagram, and okay. uh, we did our Marine Corps birthday celebration here. The uh, As you mentioned before, the, the food is awesome, and the support we get out of the, uh, they call them DFACs, the, essentially a chow hall. They provided us a big Marine Corps birthday cake. We had a ceremony right here on the flight line, cut cake and, and ate it and then uh, shared the rest of it with our Air Force and Army brethren. Good. Uh, and with a smaller group of Marines there, then it's probably a little bit easier to pick out the youngest and the oldest Marine. It was very easy. Uh, okay. matter of fact, and I'll, I'll tell him right now, our Sergeant Major was the oldest, so I didn't end up getting that one. <laughs> and then uh, we had a young PFC Henry was our youngest Marine. Uh, well, again, it's a it's quite an honor to uh, to celebrate that wherever you are. And and how did uh, how did your brethren react to that? I guess they liked the cake. You know, they actually uh, very well. They were very uh, quick to wish us a happy birthday. I went to a couple meetings with the. Uh, Air Force Wing here, the 455th uh, Air Expeditionary Wing, and and they were very quick in the meetings to wish us a happy birthday. And I was actually amazed at how many former Marines were now uh, Air Force officers and even some Army officers. So that was fun too, because they would, you know, walk up and wish a happy birthday and give you the Semper Fi. And then, of course, you'd always ask, "Wait a minute, come here." <laughs> yeah. So. Well, well, then you can tell them. I guess that their best training uh, for being in the Army or the Air Force had to come from being in the Marines first. That's uh, we never miss a chance to make sure they remember <laughs> that, Ben. <laughs> Absolutely, uh, and and again, um, w- when you're, are you working with uh, other coalition partners too? I don't know if the British are in that uh, area of operation or some of the other coalition partners. We are. We've done. Uh, we've flown numerous missions uh, in support of the Italians, French, uh, some British forces as well. So absolutely, coalition forces. Um, we've even received fuel airborne from many of our coalition forces. So it's a uh, an all hands effort over here. That's for sure. You mentioned about having the Afghan woman baking in the uh, in the mess. Uh, is there a um, opportunity for other uh, interaction at all with uh, other Afghans or other natives? Well, there there are obviously you know in in the situation we're in right now, we don't uh, necessarily want to befriend anybody, right. uh, you know, and and worry about operational security, but. Uh, there are quite a few local nationals, uh, Afghani uh, people who are who are actually employed here on the base. Mm-hmm. So uh, they work in the chow halls. They do you know numerous things, and and like always, you know it's it's good for them to you know have the interaction with us. Uh, you know, regardless of how they were raised, whether they you know think we're not here to help them or we are here to help so they get to you know actually see what we're doing in here and and uh i think that helps build some of those bridges that we'll need in the future it it, certainly in our conversations with many who are deployed in iraq that certainly seemed to be the case there you served a couple of times there too right 
uh, as we um, uh, as we wrap it up here, we'll talk a little bit about uh, again one of the things that always impresses us. And again, the Lieutenant Colonel Seagraves, as as you have a, a number of um, of young guys that you're working with as well, uh, is that the focus that they have on the mission. We just we are so impressed and just floored, really by how well uh, they understand what they're doing, the job that they have before them, and how, uh, fo- how focused they are on their mission. Yeah, they're, uh, you know, it's, you've, you've probably heard numerous different times, you know, the greatest generation, and it, it's, it's amazing, these, these young people of today, everywhere from, you know, 18 years uh, old, you know, all the way up to me that, that have dedicated their, their life, uh, you know, go into harm's way on a daily basis, uh, to, to, uh, support their, their brothers and sisters out there in the field. And, uh, you know, no matter what mission we give them, no matter how hard the challenge seems to be, they always rise to the occasion. So it's uh, it's pretty amazing, you know. You you don't get to necessarily always hear the good side of it, and uh, when you get to see these young Americans over here working the way they do and proud to do it in all kinds of you know cold and rainy, uh, you know, to to baking sun, it it motivates you, you know, myself, mm-hmm. uh, just to just to watch that happen. Um, very, very impressive. Uh, you know, the no doubt in my mind will will uh, ever have to worry about anything in in uh, the United States because these these kids are going to make sure that that uh, our future is safe forever. One of the things that is all that has struck us, and it doesn't matter if it uh, comes from a. Uh, newly minted Marine or someone who's been in as a career for some time or if they got into it for uh, because they were just kind of um, uh, not not in a good direction of their life or if they always wanted to be a Marine is that it that it changes their lives and uh, and even the, even in a forward deployed area like this they find they find new ways to love to what they're doing and to love being in the Marine Corps yeah, they really do, and and uh, you hit it on the head like we were talking about earlier with, you know, the other branches of service that have former Marines in it. You know, you you get to see uh, how that's forged in their life because they're they're so quick when they see you as a Marine to run up and and say, hey, I was, uh, you know, I was a Marine, I was a grunt back in you know, whatever years, and uh, you can really see that it's it's stuck with them throughout their life. Well, again, sir, we want to honor you for, for your service, Lieutenant Colonel C. Graves, who's the commanding officer for Marine Tactical Electronic Warfare Squadron 1, the VMAQ-1, the Banshees out of Cherry Point with 2nd Marine Air Wing Forward and, uh, in Bagram. And uh, thank you for your service, and thank you for speaking with us today as we uh, talk to, live from Afghanistan. Well, we appreciate it, Ben. Thanks, and uh, uh, we look forward to getting back there to eastern North Carolina. And uh, it's definitely our privilege to be over here serving serving our great country. Thanks for your time. Okay, sir. Thank you very much. That's it. We appreciate it. All right, Ben. You bet. Okay. Take care. Have a great day. Oh, yeah. You were born where you went to high school, and, it's, you know, just background. Um, well, I was born in Washington, D.C. back in 89. I moved from Florida to Georgia for uh, between the first two years, and then ever since then I've been living in Virginia. And uh, okay. for high school, I went to James Wood High School and graduated in 07. And then uh, I guess your family has a long history in the military. Um, what uh, What prompted you, other than that, what prompted you um, to uh, enlist in the Marine Corps? Um, well, my my mother's side of the family had 97 years worth of Navy, and they really wanted me to go into the Navy and uh, go ahead and complete 100 years. Um, but it, it was just the the challenges, the 
just everything I've heard about the Marine Corps that drew me to that. Now, did, uh, you're a mechanic. Uh, do you, what exactly do you do there? Um, right now, we work on generators to supply power. Um, we we assist uh, all the other squadrons with the aircraft to keep them flying. Um, we also work on AC units to to keep the shelters that the the other Marines work out of. We keep those running so the the gear that they test stays within uh, certain specs. Okay. Um, now, how long have you uh, – was this your first assignment? When did you actually uh, join the, 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 uh, the Marines, and uh, when did you end up in Afghanistan? Um, I joined right after high school. I took the summer off to go have some fun before I uh, signed up and went to boot camp. Uh, I was in a delayed entry program, meaning I was – scheduled to go to boot camp, but they allowed me to have that summer off just to uh, pretty much be free uh, before I went to boot camp. And then from there, I went to school down in Pensacola, Florida for about seven months. Then North Carolina up in Cherry Point for about two months. And then finally, I went to to my current uh, station, which is New River in Jacksonville, North Carolina. And from there, just last year, late last year, I went to Pakistan for three months for humanitarian, and now I'm in Afghanistan. Now, you're, um, you're, how, you're 21 or 22? 22, getting ready to turn 23. When's your birthday? January 4th. Okay. Um, so how many, uh, I guess it's a British military base, right? How many Americans are there with you? Um, there, there's a good bit. I don't know the exact number, but there's a good bit. Now, um, I guess, uh, now let's talk about the holidays. Uh, this is, is this the, ordinarily one would be with one's family. Um, what kind of, what, what goes on there for Thanksgiving or Christmas? What do they do when you're stuck in Afghanistan? Uh, well, for Thanksgiving, I know that they're going to have uh, some some uh, nice Thanksgiving dinners at the chow halls. Um, my unit is actually having like a little competition where they're taking MREs and they're going to – it's uh, Iron Chef Afghanistan. So they're going to allow us and uh, nine other contestants try to make the best-looking and best-tasting meal out of MREs. Huh. That's funny. Um I, I guess you, uh, they don't, I mean, you have a regular kitchen there, so you're, you wouldn't typically eat MREs on a regular basis, right? Because you're not out in the field? Yeah, it's just mainly for the Marines that are out there. Um, yeah, I've heard that they're good, but they get old because there's only so many different ones. Um, but, uh, so how do you feel about, uh, having to spend Thanksgiving and Christmas away from your family? I'm sorry, I didn't hear your question. Sorry, um, how do you feel having to spend Thanksgiving and Christmas away from your family? Um, you get kind of lonely uh, during the holidays, but like like I told the reporter before, um, I know what my job is out here. I know what I'm supposed to be doing. And when I get back, I'll be able to have great moments just like I would during Thanksgiving dinner with the family. What do you get a sense you're accomplishing in Afghanistan? What was that? What What do you uh, feel that you're accomplishing over there? What difference are you guys making? Um, I would say our main mission over here is to win the hearts and minds of the locals. And from, from what I've read in the articles and the newspapers and stuff, I believe we're doing a uh, a good job. Um, the, the folks you come in contact with, do you think most of them, the, the, the locals, do you think most of them uh, are glad we're there or they want us to leave tomorrow? Or The ones that I've come in contact with, uh, they support what we're doing over here. Um, majority of them are really friendly, really talkative. 
how much impact do you have with the locals in, in your in your job? I mean, do they do you are you stuck on a base the whole time, or do you get to go out into town? No, I'm I'm stuck on base as of right now, and the only time we get interaction with them is uh, whenever we ride the bus or we go to the chow hall. We usually come in contact with them. Um, and uh, tell me something about Afghanistan that people wouldn't know, like that surprised you about the local culture or the food or the people or anything. Um, well, of course everyone knows that it's hot, but I, me personally, I don't believe they understand exactly how hot it is during the summer. When I first got here, it, it was 120, 130, and the sun is just beating down on you pretty hard. What's the humidity? Humidity, uh, pretty much zero. <laughs> oh, so it's a dry heat like California, not a hot, humid heat. Yeah, but it, it's still, still a really hot heat. Um, have you been in, a, in, in dangerous situations over there? I guess in anywhere in Afghanistan, in a military base, you're a potential target. I mean, do you feel safe where you are? Um. It wasn't really a dangerous situation. We actually had uh, indirect fire. It was a mortar round that went off and landed on our compound. Um, from where, exactly where I work, it was probably about 20, 30 uh, yards, but it, it didn't explode. It went through um, some some type of material that the Marine Corps uses, like a metal material for runways and stuff. Right. But, yeah, it landed right beside the compound, and everyone was shook up, and then we went back to doing what we got to do. What goes through your head when something like that happens? Um, luckily for me, I was actually back in the room. I was off shift when it happened, but when I came back in and saw exactly what it did, yeah, it, it made me realize that I'm out here um, in a dangerous area and just – I'm here to do my job and make sure it gets done. Uh, and when was that incident? Um, I don't know off the top of my head. It, it was a few weeks ago. Um, you, uh, is there anything you guys need that if folks, you know, is there like a website they could, I mean, I don't know how that works, like care packages or could you even get that? Or, I mean, are you guys set okay? Because, Early in the war, we heard all these stories about, like, families were buying armor to ship over there because the military didn't have enough stuff. I mean, do you feel you're well-equipped now? Yes. The gear that I've been issued is top-of-the-line stuff. Um, it's what everyone else has issued. I don't know why there's hearsay saying that uh, there's armor issues. But uh, other than that, we do get care packages. Um, we actually got one Marine who talked to his father back home in uh, Washington, and all he wanted for Christmas was uh, Christmas lights. <laughs> now we're getting all these boxes of Christmas lights, and we're going to decorate it up and uh, take pictures and send them to the local newspaper back home and show them exactly what we did with them. Well, that's cool. Yeah, one of you guys is on Fox News, and you got to get a warehouse to store everything. You get mail. Yeah, what kind of stuff uh, do you all like? It, well, I mean, obviously, like chocolate or something wouldn't work, but like, what kind of stuff works to send that you guys don't have? That would be cool to have. Um, well, I know we're all big fans of jerky. My family, there, there's a lot of hunters in my family, so they're going to be sending me deer jerky here soon. Um, just basically anything uh, that we pretty much don't have. Um, I'm trying to think of some stuff because we get some creative packages that come in. Um, letters from the local schools, stuff like that, um, elementary schools. That's got to be a blast. Get those. Yeah, <laughs> seeing some of the pictures and stuff that they draw. And then we try to respond back, but it, we get so many in that it's hard to keep up with them and then try to keep our work on. Yeah, you got a job to do. It's not a vacation. Um, but, yeah, that's cool. Okay. <laughs> um how long does it take when someone mails something by the time you get it? It's about a week, two weeks, depending on uh, the traffic of the mail. And how do you communicate with your family? Do you get to make calls like this sometimes, or, or do you have Internet access? 
Yeah, so we uh, I contact my wife uh, through the email, and then I usually call my immediate family uh, once or twice a week, depending on how busy we are. Do they have a system set up? I mean, I guess you don't have like a, a Sprint cell phone there. I mean, how do you how do you physically make the phone call to your family? Uh, it's a landline. Oh, okay, cool. All right, anything else you want to say to folks? Um, well, wish everyone uh, a great holiday. Um, make sure they spend it wisely with the family and enjoy the moments. There's a lot of people over here that obviously can't be back home and would definitely trade trade places in a second to be back with their families. Okay. Do you have any connection with Fort Royal Warren County? Um, no. Okay, but your parents are in Winchester now? Yes. Okay, cool. Any connection with Lynchburg? I'm asking because I have three newspapers. Uh, no. Okay. All right. Well, hey, I really appreciate it, and I wish you um, a very happy Thanksgiving, as best it can be in Afghanistan. And um, what's the temperature there now? Um, right now it's about 40, 45. Okay, so you definitely get uh, all four seasons. Um. Summer sounds yeah. like how cold does it get? Like, what's the coldest? Um, I think I read it gets usually around 30 at the lowest, and that's about midnight, and then right as the sun's starting to come up. Yeah. Do y'all get any local food? I mean, like Afghanistan food? I mean, um, I don't, not at my chow hall that I eat at. Um, there's there's six different chow halls, so they they might incorporate it in one of their meals, but I haven't seen any local food. But the food is it, the stuff you get. Is it like stuff flown in or from America, and it's it's good food or it's edible? <laughs> yeah, if you're on a submarine, it'd be like filet mignon. And then uh, Maggie here is asking, "What's that, Maggie? Oh, you do you have turkey on Thanksgiving?" Um, I believe that they are going to have some. I'm not. I'm not 100% sure, but I believe they're going to probably fly some in. Okay. Cool. Awesome. All right. Well, uh, I appreciate the time. It's great talking to you. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Have a good one. You too. All right. Bye bye. Hi. Th this is Tracy. This is a uh, Master Sergeant Noble. Hi. How are you? Thank you so much for taking the time to call me. Um, first first of all, can you spell your first and last names for me? It's Michael Noble, M-I-C-H-A-E-L, mm -hmm. N-O-B-L-E. Okay, and you're a Master Sergeant in the Marine Corps? Yes. Is that right? Okay. Um, how long have you been in the Marines? 22 years. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Um, and your hometown is in Suffolk? Virginia? Yes. Okay. Wonderful. Um, can you tell me what it's like to, to be away from home on Thanksgiving? I'm I'm sure this probably isn't the first time you've been away from home on Thanksgiving, is it? This is, this is not the first time I've, I've been away from home for Thanksgiving, whether it be uh, uh, Iraq, Afghanistan, uh, Okinawa, Japan, or uh, a, a simple, uh, uh, you know, being away at school. Uh, our, our timing doesn't even necessarily rely around holidays, and, and we have schedules to keep. So yeah. it's it, it's it's rough, but after you've done it for so long, you just rely that you know you're around other people that are going through the exact same thing. And know that you're not alone, and you make the best of what you have. Yeah. All right, I'm just catching up with you here. Okay. Um, why did you initially want to go into the Marines? Uh, the your question was. Why did I initially join the Marine Corps? Yes. Well, I was um, looking for more of a challenge. 
I guess you could say. Uh, I was uh, very athletic all the way. I grew up skiing for a living, so uh, I wanted something a little bit uh, more of a challenge and, and more exciting, so uh, I ended up here. Uh, my father was a Marine, so uh, I already lived through that growing up, so now I, uh, you know, 22 years later, here I am. Yeah. <laughs> okay. What, where are you currently stationed? Can you tell me? I'm currently stationed uh, out of Cherry Point, Marine Corps Air Station, Cherry Point, North Carolina. Okay, but you're serving in Afghanistan right now, is that correct? I am in Camp Leatherneck, Afghanistan. Okay. Um, what are your duties there? I am the senior enlisted advisor to the commanding officer. Uh, for the headquarters squadron, I guess you could say. We're the headquarters squadron for the the second marine aircraft wing forward. Yeah. It's kind of a kind of a it's kind of a mouthful. Yeah. They just say senior enlisted advisor to the commanding officer uh at the second second mall, second marine aircraft wing forward. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um yeah. what and uh, I am the uh senior enlisted advisor advising the commanding officers on all uh, personnel matters, uh, dealing with uh, enlisted Marines and uh, how operations uh, are conducted from uh, from uh, the Marine Corps' stand, you know, standards and conduct. So I advise them on legal personnel matters. Okay. Um, so what are you all going to be doing to celebrate Thanksgiving together? Uh, what are we going to do for Thanksgiving? Well, we're going to eat well. That's I think that's on the menu. And uh, we are going to have a Thanksgiving dinner here. They are going to have turkey and, and ham and uh, and and do the best they can to, to make it a uh, make it a, a good Thanksgiving uh, for us. And sometimes we get uh, you know this. Sometimes you get some uh, unannounced celebrities to come for Thanksgiving, but uh, for us here in, in Camp Leatherneck, it'll just be a normal Thanksgiving uh, away from our families, as normal as being in Afghanistan could be. Yeah. So we're just gonna we're gonna go and we're we're gonna eat well and we're we're, we're gonna you know. Walk it off afterwards, and know that the the next day is is another day, and you know we're not going to slow down. That you know probably right after we get done eating, we're going to resume normal operations because we don't stop uh, stop what we're doing uh, for for anything. Uh-huh. You know we're running uh, you know, aviation combat operations here 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So uh, the aircraft will will still fly uh, no matter what they're serving for dinner. Um, so do you want to use this opportunity to send a hello to your family and friends here in Suffolk? Well, yeah, my, my, uh, my wife, because we live in, uh, in northern Suffolk, uh, off of Shoulders Hill, mm-hmm. and, uh, she is, she's currently getting ready to go to her, her parents' house for, for Thanksgiving, so she's getting the car ready and, and getting the dog ready, and, uh, and she's going to drive down to North Carolina, so I know she really, really wishes that that I could be there, and and uh, and I would really like to be there, and know that you know this will be this will be over soon for me, and I'll be home soon. Are you going to be able to be home for Christmas? No, I, I don't think so. I, I think it'll be uh, a little longer than that. Uh, the February time frame is, is what I'm looking at, so it'll be. Uh, It'll be a couple, you know, a few more months left here for for most of us. Okay. Well, I don't have any other questions for you. Is there anything you want to add? Um, other than you know, I just can't wait to get back to get back there to 
uh, here we have a, a new Dick's Sporting Goods in Harborview. Yes, or on the other right. side. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm, are you and uh, I, I hear about that, and <laughs> I just want to, you know, just drive around and go take the dog over to Bennett's Creek Park and go out on the boat and, you know, go play some golf. Where do you usually play golf at? Uh, all over. I'll either go down to the uh, Cypress, uh, the club down in Franklin, mm-hmm. uh, or I'll play at uh, Lambert's Point in Norfolk, mm-hmm. or any, I mean, I'll do the round robin. Yeah. I have yet to play Harborview, and that is on my list of when I get back. Okay. Um how long have you been on this current tour? What's that? How long have you been away this time? Uh, I I got here in the beginning of February. Hmm. So it's going to be about a year for you. That's how yeah, it'll been. be it'll be one year this time. Last time was uh, thirteen months. They they managed to get an extra month out of me last time. <laughs> I don't have any other questions for you, unless there's anything you want All right. To All right. Well, God bless you, and thank you for your service. Well, thank you, and, and you enjoy your Thanksgiving as well. All right. Thank you very much. Yep. Bye. Bye. Uh, PFC Wart, this is uh, Bob Hauer in uh, Harrisburg with WHP Radio. Can you hear me okay? Yes, I can. Can you hear me? Yes, I can, sir. Yes, I can. For, to be favor, first of all, I know they list you as Harrisburg. Uh, are, are you Harrisburg City? Or are you one of the municipalities nearby? Lopax? I was born in Harrisburg, and I grew up in Rutherford. Rutherford. All right. Okay. All right. I was going to ask you a couple of, of holiday-related questions, that, that type of thing this time of the year, if that's okay. Thank you. Okay, that's fine. Uh, all right. Uh, I do have tape rolling. Uh, so we're going to use small sound bites of, of some of the things we talk about here as part of our newscast. So if something doesn't sound right or don't don't feel as if it's live, okay? Okay. All right. First of all, um, Thanksgiving holiday, it's, it's one of those definite get-together with the family holidays. Um, you're obviously not able to be home uh, to do that for very good reason. Um, kind of give me some of your feelings uh, of, of missing that, missing family, and, and maybe some of the ways family are trying to reach out to you to make you feel as home as they can make you. I mean, you definitely miss your family, but you stay in contact with them. I and mean, everybody over here you're pretty close with, so it's it's not too bad. Okay. you We know a lot, especially watching the football games, for instance, nationally on Thanksgiving Day. You always see the, the live look-ins uh, with the troops watching the games, uh, uh, being being connected to things going on here, I guess more normal life here in the States, uh, and maybe seeing some of the well wishes from family members that are sent back overseas. Uh, are those meaningful to you? I mean, do, do they really touch base to you, uh, for you, and, and if so, how? Uh, yeah, I definitely, I like that stuff. I agree with it. I think I should keep doing it because it's just good to show support for the troops in any way. Tell me a little bit about your family back home here. Uh, who, who maybe, uh, I guess, back here in the states that uh, that you love to spend time with, and kind of what might you be missing out on right now? Do you think? Um, my parents both live at home in Harrisburg. They probably be cooking a good dinner or breakfast, whatever time it is back home right now. At Thanksgiving, they definitely be making a very good meal. Any any Thanksgiving staples, uh, dinner wise, that that's uh, like th- that taste of Thanksgiving, something that really stands out to you? Definitely homemade turkey. Any other family traditions, anything like that that you would uh, you'd partake in, like a you know family football game or uh, what your your Thanksgiving days would be like back here? Um, usually, my cousins come over, my grandparents. We all just get together, eat dinner, then watch football for the night. All right, and and finally, understanding full well uh, that you uh, would love to be home. You know, when when people tell you again, they really appreciate the service uh, and the sacrifice you're making. Uh, kind of give me an idea what that makes you feel when you hear those types of things. How does it make you feel? 
it feels good just when people say thank you and they're grateful for the sacrifice we make because it, it really means a lot to all of us. Even some people might say it doesn't mean anything, but it definitely means a lot, and I'm very thankful for people saying stuff like that. I do want to have one follow-up question I just saw in the notes. Uh, your father, uh, your grandfather, I should say, was in the Army National Guard, I believe. Yes. Okay. Um, did that influence your decision to go in, into the military? And, and if so, I really don't know much more about any type of military background, but, but that familiarity with your family, that encouraged you to, to make the decision to make the sacrifice? It made a little bit of a decision. My brother joined the Navy right before me, and that, that really is what made me want to join. Is your brother still in the Navy at this point? Is he still deployed, or is he back home? Uh, he just returned home from a deployment over overseas, but he's getting out next year. Okay, uh, PFC Ward, I appreciate your time uh, and wish you the best of luck. Please be safe and come home soon. All right, thank you. All right, thank you very much, gentlemen. All right, bye. Bye. We are honored to speak with another one of our Marines and Sailors in uh, live from Afghanistan from 2nd Marine Air Wing Forward. And today we have joining us Staff Sergeant Julie Seidler, who is a career planner, I understand. And Staff Sergeant uh, Seidler, thanks for being with us here today. Thank you. Uh, tell me a little bit about yourself. How long have you been in the Marine Corps? I've been in just over 14 years. And in this uh, 14 years, uh, tell us a little bit about some of your duty stations. I know you're stationed out of Cherry Point now, but uh, where are some of the other places that you've been? Well, my almost all of my time I've spent on um, the East Coast with Lejeune and Cherry Point. I was with Lejeune my last deployment for OIS, but other than that, it's been back and forth from Lejeune and Cherry Point. Where are you from originally? From Louisville, Kentucky. Louisville, Kentucky. Oh, uh, so any uh, any horse racing in your background? I'm sorry? Any horse racing in your background? I mean, after all, from the home of the Kentucky Derby. No, no horse racing. I've <laughs> done a little bit of horseback riding, but none of the racing. <laughs> uh, well, again, great place to be. Uh, to be. And uh, do you have still have some family in that area? I do. Um, my mother and father and aunts and uncles. Myself, myself and my sisters and brother, we've all moved out of the area. We're all associated with military or in the military, so we've kind of all moved away from there. Well, I bet that makes family gatherings pretty interesting. What kind of uh, branches of the service are everybody in? My brother is Army. He just left Iraq um, this month, he, a few days ago, actually. And then um, my sister, she married a Marine that is down in North Carolina, so mm -hmm. at least I have one close to me. And my sister was married to Army, but she moved up to Pennsylvania mm -hmm. closer to her kid's father. Uh, again, this is uh, it's interesting when you have a military family like that uh, as well as when you gather. And here we are, we're recording this the day before Thanksgiving, uh, and you are going to be in, thang in Afghanistan for Thanksgiving Day. So tell us, wh what do you anticipate there? Have you been on a deployment during Thanksgiving before? Yes, sir, I have. Um, when I was in Iraq in 2007, I was there for a whole year, so I got to spend the holidays there. So this is my second time away from home in it's just looking forward to spending time with the Marines. My pretty much my other family is the Marines out here. Well, do you have some family back home as well that you might say hello to? Yes. Um. Well, actually, my son and his father there, they from Maysville, and I would love to say hello to my son. I know he'll be listening to this. I told him to start listening. I'll be on the radio. <laughs> and I want to say hi to good. him and that I miss him and love him. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Uh, again, uh, Staff Sergeant Julie Seidler uh, with us today. And now uh, you mentioned about being deployed to Iraq and uh, now in Afghanistan. Have those been your, um, your again, let's say uh, well, wartime deployments, or have you had any others? Those have been my only two since I've been in just a year there and then a year out here. Uh, compare those uh, for us a little bit. What's it uh, like uh, in terms of what you're doing there in Afghanistan and what you were doing in Iraq? Well, I mean, it's pretty much the same. It's, I was with a different unit then. I was with division then, so it was the ground side troops that I was with. So a little different mentality or 
uh, attitude with Marines, but um, it's pretty much the same. I mean, my job was the same, so it's constantly working with Marines. That's all it really is. Well, let's talk about that a little bit. Uh, understand uh, from a inform- little bit of information I have that uh, you're a career planner. What does that mean to be a career planner in the Marine Corps? It's a lot like being a guidance counselor. It's when Marines are coming up on the end of their contract, they come and talk to me for any kind of guidance as far as transition out of the Marine Corps and reenlistment. A lot of them come to me with um, any reenlistments. If they want to stay in the Marine Corps, they'll see me. I try and give them as much information as I can when they're getting out, anything that I can do to help them on their way out the door. What do you find to be some of the best information you can give a Marine who's exiting the service? Well, some of the best information is, well, I'd like to tell them just to stay in the Marine Corps because yeah. it's, it's the way to go. Well, with me it was, I already having 14 years in, but um, it's just doing what they want to, and they have to think about their family. A lot of these young Marines with new new children, new wives, new spouses, it's just they have to take care of their family, whichever way they go. Yeah, uh, I would imagine, again, given the economy, I would think reenlistment rates would be pretty good. They are. It's actually a lot harder to stay in the Marine Corps now than it was a few years ago. Um, a lot of these guys, they're seeing how the economy is. They're going back home and realizing the people with college degrees, are they're out delivering pizzas, so they're coming back to me trying to do everything they can to stay in. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, again, uh, wh- how about for you? Again, with a, a military family, uh, you does it, was this something you always wanted to do, kind of knew you were going to do? Uh, somewhat. I I knew that when I graduated high school I wasn't ready for college, so mm-hmm. it was a thing to do to keep the structure in my life. When I was growing up, it was a very structured environment in our family. So this was one of the things. I had a Marine Corps recruiter call me one day and, just pretty much said okay, sat and listened to him, and ended up signing the contract. Then there you go, uh, and uh, and then off. Where where was uh, was boot camp at Paris Island for you? Yes, sir. It was at Paris Island. Yeah, being on the East Coast. Yeah. So uh, this is a uh, again, obviously your career now uh, as well. And uh, after 14 years in, we're talking to Staff Sergeant Julie uh, Seidler, who helps with career planning for some of the Marines. How about as far as uh, encouraging Marines maybe to um, to improve themselves in the Corps and, uh, and to ready themselves for promotion? Is that some of the work that you do, too? It is. Um, I do a lot of counseling as far as promotions. Um, Marines records, I mean, they'll come to me. I can go through and guide them on the things they need to do better at, which will in turn help them with their promotions. I think there's probably a lot of us in the civilian world that really don't know how that works. That, that think that uh, you know, as long as you just stay in, you'll eventually get promoted. But uh, there, I mean, you really have to hit some pretty high marks and high standards. Yes, sir. It is very, very, very competitive anymore to for promotions in the Marine Corps. It's you got to be the best of the best anymore to get promoted. Uh, it's talking, talking to Staff Sergeant Julie Seidler again about uh, working there. But on a deployment like this, I can understand me you know, back at Cherry Point or back at Lejeune, and you are you know working with the Marines who walk in the door. Is, is it different though, and when you're talking about career planning while you're in a war zone? It has is it has a little bit of differences. Um, just being here makes it a little bit difficult sometimes because the Marines are here away from their families, and I'm trying to talk them into doing this longer and spending more time away. But, it, I mean, a lot of the Marines, they come in to see me out here still trying to figure out what they can do to stay in. Yeah. Uh, you know, we talk a lot as we've done these uh, Marine moments and uh, now live from Afghanistan, we talk of this on these programs about how people do stay in touch back home and and how it has changed some of the uh some of the older officers will tell us uh that uh this is uh, quite a bit different uh, than it was when they first got in the Marine Corps. Is that help maybe in making some of these decisions that they have an opportunity to perhaps talk about it with family at home? 
and never really thought of it, but um, I guess it it would that way. I mean, the quicker turnaround if a Marine is coming to see me and they want to talk to their family, it's not having to wait for a letter two, three weeks. It's getting on an email or making a phone call and just call, calling home and talking to their family about it. Yeah, quite a bit different, I would imagine, from uh, from days past in the history, long history. Uh, but now here in yeah. Afghanistan, as you are uh, um, as you are looking at uh, at what is coming ahead for you as as well. I mean, you, I would imagine career planning is a little self planning for you for you too. It is. <laughs> that's and that's one of the things with doing this. I I think about the Marines so much, I end up forgetting about myself sometimes. So I have to stop and figure out what I need to do for myself. Uh, again, we're talking to Staff Sergeant Julie Seeler about uh, being in the Marine Corps as a career planner. Uh, we talk a lot about, uh, again, on, on this side, uh, with with folks who've gotten out of the Marine Corps, have gotten out of the service, and also work with un, uh, with employment security people, job link people here in North Carolina. About, uh, In fact, we just had Hire Veteran Week. Uh, and so it, it, the veterans, though, do face some uh, specific challenges, I think, when they get out of the Corps. That's maybe, for example, you talked about a regimented life, uh, and and they may not face that when they get out. I would imagine that's an adjustment. Sorry? I would imagine it's quite an adjustment for some of these uh, Marines who, who've been in for several different contracts and to, to get out and not have that kind of regimented life. It, it It is. Um, I have talked to Marines that they have gotten out, and the adjustment is very difficult, and it's more or less when the difficulty is there, they're talking to me, trying to find a way back in to get yeah. the structure back. Right. All right. Uh, let's, let's talk a little bit about some of the things that you uh, that you do on deployment. In fact, where are are you in uh, Camp Leatherneck, or are you in Bagram, or where are you stationed? Yes, sir. I'm in Camp Leatherneck. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, and there again, working as you said, with uh, are you working with the ground troops a lot in in, um, in Iraq? Is it different working with uh, some of the uh, pilots or air crew or maintenance? It is somewhat. Um, most of the time with the with the air crew, it's just trying to track them down because they're flying <laughs> everywhere all the time, so it's a little bit harder. Yeah. Yeah, that's a little bit more uh, difficult, I would imagine. Yeah, when when they say, "Oh, where are they?" Oh, thirty thousand feet. Uh, but uh, it's a, it's another story. Uh, but uh, is it different in terms of um, of their laying, helping them to lay out their future? Because a lot are very driven. I mean, already if they're certainly if they're pilots. So, um, well, somewhat it's pretty much the same. I mean, when they are dealing with their future, it's plan that they have that's what they want to do and whether it's the marine corps or moving on to the marine corps usually they already have it set up with what they want to do hey, do you find camp leatherneck uh comparable to where you were stationed in iraq in terms of uh some of the other amenities like uh even the food yes sir um, actually camp leatherneck is a lot better than it was when i was in um, iraq i was at camp Fluja in iraq but mm-hmm. um the living conditions are better here. The chow is definitely better. <laughs> uh, yeah, we always talk to the folks about the food. I mean, uh, uh, some of our old, uh, old, um, older uh, veterans uh, just remember uh, subsisting on MREs a lot of times on a deployment. You don't have to do that. Yes, sir. Yeah, that's a, that's a good thing. Uh, all right, let's. Uh, I want to hear a little bit about uh, again about what you are your interaction, perhaps. Uh, uh, and maybe some of the things y'all are talking about these days, because there's a lot of budget considerations out there, and I'm sure it doesn't escape your ears, too. You hear about uh, possible cutbacks in uh, different areas, and uh, that has to be, I would think, maybe uh, stepping up some of the uh, some people's uh, willingness to re-enlist or, or try the efforts to try to stay in. Yes, sir. It, with the budget and the cutbacks, possible drawdown in the Marine Corps is definitely, it's helping me. It's making my job a little easier because the concern is there of not even having the opportunity to stay if they want to. Uh, what kind of advice would you give uh, someone who is maybe like you and they came out of high school, not quite sure what they want to do, and and uh, they are looking at uh, one of the uniform services uh, as a possible job and possible career? What do you, what do you see there? Um. I think it is a great option. It 
if you're able to deal with the structured environment, it is, it's an amazing career opportunity. The benefits that come along are just a plus for everything. And uh, with those uh, benefits, uh, I know for you, have you been able to take advantage while you've been in for 14 years um, uh, con- to consider some uh, even college course options or anything like that? Yes, sir. I'm, I'm actually doing online college out here with Ashford University. Um, I've been, I'm got about 40 hours left, I think, until my bachelor's degree is complete. But I'm working on getting my master's done before I retire. Well, that'd be great, and uh, I would imagine uh, if you're online in the online community, uh, when everybody says where they're for, uh, where they are, and you say Afghanistan, that's going to be a little bit of a uh, different uh, uh, result, I would imagine for some on uh, taking the course online. Hey, mm-hmm. How is it? Are you are you enjoying the taking the course? Yes, sir. It's um it's great being able to work online. I can work my schedule and um, just setting a time a certain time out of the day and be able to do what I need to do and. It's it's so easy. I don't have to worry about showing up for a class. It's just showing up at the computer and actually doing the work. All right. Again, we are talking to Staff Sergeant Julie Siedler live from Afghanistan here today, and uh, as we are continuing this uh, conversation. Uh, then how about uh, do you lay that out with some of uh, young Marines that maybe just coming up at the end of their first hitch that uh, they would have some similar opportunities? So um, our Marines that are on their first contract when they come in, I usually see them about two years out from their end of their contract, and that is one of the things that I talk to them about and try and do everything I can to get them in college. That way they have something there when they do decide to get out or even when they decide if they decide to stay in, it's a great promotion opportunity as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, so as uh, – and then you, uh, what about more experienced Marines as you talk to them? Is there some different levels of advice for that? Well, it's pretty much the same thing. I and mean, the more experienced Marines, they're looking at their career as doing a 20 or more years. So they know what's ahead of them, and they don't need as much advice as the young Marines do. Uh, I, again, I guess we go back to the um, to the promotions and the cutting scores. Is that uh, that becomes an all important area for them? Yes. Uh, let's uh, let me ask you a little bit about um, uh, about what you see uh, not only for yourself but uh, for other uh, women that are in the Marine Corps now as a career. Is this a uh, is this part of the conversation too? Sometimes how how is just, how things have improved? Opportunities are so much better now. Well, I mean, it it does become part of the some well part of the conversation sometimes. But um, as far as women, it's just it's the same thing as men anymore. We have the same opportunities as them, as them, so it's not as hard on them as as it was before. So it makes things a little bit easier to keep the women in too. Well, again, that's good. And uh, uh, as far as um, uh, we, one of the things that's always amazed us and i can see it in just in talking with you as well is that everybody understands their mission really well and, and especially when they're in a forward base lane like in afghanistan and forward operating position is that they remain pretty focused and so i would imagine that uh that you, you don't have the, the have that kind of counseling session so much with a, a marine they understand pretty much their job sir. is that uh is that something that do you ever see as a difficulty or is that a, a positive thing about the marines that you talk to no it's it's definitely they understand what the mission is and everybody has a job to do they know what to do how to do it and they find a way to get it done uh talking to staff sergeant julie sealer who's career planner at uh, camp leatherneck in afghanistan how long have you been on this deployment now um it's been eight months now i think Okay. Uh, when are you due to rotate back out? Coming soon? It should be soon, yes. Um, three, four months. Okay. So get through the holidays and all that. What do you, what do you expect? Uh, again, uh, we're recording this day before Thanksgiving. What will tomorrow be like there? Um, the good food, definitely. <laughs> we definitely have Thanksgiving, the meal planned out over at the chow hall here, so it will definitely be that Um. A little oh. football, too. We've got oh. some football plans. So it'll be a Thanksgiving just the same, but here in Afghanistan. 
you say football plans. Is that as in watching or in participating? No, we got some participating. There's a few <laughs> games set up that will will be done tomorrow. So the Great Turkey Bowl is going to take place in Afghanistan. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, hey, that's a tra- it was a tradition growing up in our family too. Is that we always had a little touch football or something going on afterwards there, and uh, uh, I I could bet that could be pretty competitive out there. Yes, definitely. The bragging rights makes it very competitive. Right, well, so, uh, tell us a little bit about what what you do. Do you you like uh, football? Is that something that you grew up playing as well, or? Uh, no, um, coming from Kentucky, definitely college basketball. That's oh, yeah. the sport that I have to watch. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, we have some some great rivalries here in North Carolina, so you are you, you understand that between uh, Duke and Carolina and That's Kentucky, easy. there's a, there's a lot of action that goes on there. <laughs> yes, sir, definitely. Um, I know back home we see Duke on the TV. We're hoping that they lose, which is sounds really bad sometimes. But <laughs> that's the Kentucky fan in me. <laughs> well, I grew up I grew up a Carolina fan, so we always had that feeling too. <laughs> we always hoped that they were losing. <laughs> yes, uh, uh, but uh, and Kentucky uh, always loaded uh, again, looking looking pretty good out there. So uh, do you do you follow the schedule? Do you have an idea of uh, when those big games are coming up? Yes, sir. Um, I do follow the schedule. We get to see them out here. It's just after they're aired back home. It's usually on the next day. So I get to watch it and try to keep from finding out who won before I see the game. Now, that has to be a task, I would imagine. Uh, in these days of Skype and Twitter and uh, and uh, emails uh, just and Facebook, uh, trying to stay away from all of that, right? <laughs> yes, sir, it is. Um, I know we were out here for March Madness, and... There were times I would get up in the middle of the night just to watch Kentucky play. That way, I could I'd know as soon as the, the game was over if they won or lost. A true blue Kentucky fan there too, and well, uh, the great <laughs> rivalries though. I mean, uh, not only do you have your rivalries in your own conference, but like you said, with Duke and Carolina, those have always been great ones too. So great ones to circle on the calendar. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, did uh, your family? Did you grow up in a sports loving family? Yes, sir. Um, we, me, my two sisters, and my brother, we were all in sports when we were younger. We tried every sport there was, and whatever we liked, we stuck to it. Mm-hmm. How about for you? What was your sport? Uh, volleyball. I, When I was younger, I'd start out with softball, basketball, volleyball, and I stuck to volleyball when I got to high school. Okay. All right. Good. And, and you uh, uh pretty competitive team? Yes, sir. The high school that I went to, we were we were pretty competitive, pretty good too. Uh, excellent. Uh, always a lot of fun there too. Again, uh, it's great to be active. Is that is that translated well in the Marine Corps to have had that kind of active background? Well, it, it definitely helps. The physical training that we go through in the Marine Corps, having the sports background, you're getting that physical aspect of it before then, so it helps coming in. Okay. Again, we're talking to Staff Sergeant Julie Seidler about uh, life in the Marine Corps in Afghanistan at Camp Leatherneck and uh, based out of uh, 2nd Marine Air Wing Forward uh, there in Afghanistan. Uh, and uh, as we hear, uh, I don't know if you have had any of that experience, but I know there have been a, a number of um, uh, senators and congressmen that come through. Do they come through Camp Leatherneck? Are you aware when they're on base? Yes, we are. There's, there's been some since we've been out here. Um, we'll find out, and if we can make it, we try and get our Marines to see them. Good. I, I believe uh, Senator Richard Burr from North Carolina was just there uh, just recently, so uh, I'm not to, not surprised. There's, there's a lot of debate going on about that, as we've talked about the possibility of drawdown in the Marine Corps and the likelihood of that now with the, where the budgets are going. Uh, so we, we're all kind of on paying attention to that, especially around here, because you guys are so important to us. I mean, Cherry Point and, and Lejeune and New River all – so important as economic engines, but you're just important because of what you do for us, and uh, and we just honor yeah. your service in in every way. Uh, do you get a chance to receive those packages during the holidays, and and are they important for you to to hear from home more than just an email or a Skype call? Yes, definitely. The packages we get, we I know last deployment and even since I've been out here, we get so many care packages. Almost too much sometimes, but um, 
It's great to have those. It's a good morale boost for the younger Marines to see that coming from home. And even getting a letter by an email or a phone call is so it's a lot better the way that I look at it to see that letter than the words on paper. To have that card and that loved one signature there is a, it is a different thing to hold that and and a grand a, a, because it just it's the memories that you're holding right there. Now, when a package comes, do you have a favorite thing that you're hoping is going to be in it? Well, usually it's the little macaroni and cheese cups, the Velveeta <laughs> ones. My mom sends those to me all the time, so if I see a package coming from her, I'm, I get excited because I know they're probably in there. <laughs> I love your mac and cheese. Yeah, well, uh, let's hope that for <laughs> your Thanksgiving dinner that you're having tomorrow, again, we were recording this before Thanksgiving, but... We we hope that you get some of your favorites there too. So, are, do you have some favorites? Something that you're looking forward to tomorrow? No, really, just the turkey, the turkey and mashed potatoes. That's the whole thing. Those are thing. my big things for Thanksgiving. You got to have all the traditional stuff. That that's just what makes it home. Uh, a little piece of home there. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, yeah, but you got to watch out if you're going to be playing football afterwards. You know, got to be careful. So, uh, all right. Well, anyway. Well, I don't uh, plan on playing, so I'll be able to eat as much as I can. <laughs> all right, good for you. Uh, Staff Sergeant Julie Siebler joining us uh, today from 2nd Marine Air Wing Forward at Gannon Camp Leatherneck. And uh, uh, and specifically, who are you attached to? With um, WHS-2, it's Marine Wing Headquarters Squadron 2 with 2nd Mall Forward. Okay. All right. And again, we honor you for your service, your 14 years in the Marine Corps, your uh, the efforts you've done to help others stay in and to develop their careers as well. To uh, we salute you, and we just um, thank and want you to pass along our, our, again our grateful thanks on this uh, Thanksgiving uh, holiday as well to all of those who are serving. And thank you for joining us here today on live from Afghanistan here on the talk station. Thank you. Okay, Staff Sergeant, we appreciate you being with us. Okay. Okay, thank you so much. Bye now. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thomas Norris of Fredericksburg, Virginia. Yes, sir, it is. Okay, hi, Tom. Uh, You're speaking with Bill at WFLS in Fredericksburg. Um, what would you like to get out there this holiday season, especially with Thanksgiving coming up, to uh, your family here in town and to everybody else? Uh, I'd just like to say hi to my wife, Victoria, and my uh, little girl, Lizzie. I uh, love you guys, and it sucks being out here and not being around you guys, but we'll be I'll be home soon. And you are in Afghanistan, right? Yes, sir. Are you going to be home before Christmas? Uh, I will not. I will be home sometime uh, beginning of next year. All right. Well, we got you on the line. Let's talk about Christmas. What would you like to say to your family and friends uh, for Christmas? Uh, Just Merry Christmas to everybody. I hope you guys enjoy all the the presents I got you and um, wish I could be there. Uh, Sergeant, did you graduate from uh, an area high school? Uh, I did not. I got. Uh, I grew up most of my life there, but uh, got moved around a lot. I actually graduated high school in Las Vegas, Nevada. Oh, okay. All right, great. Is there anything else you'd like to get out there? Uh, here's your chance. If not, I thank you for your time. Um, just thanks, everybody in Virginia, for your support, and have a good season, uh, holiday season, all that good stuff. All right, Sergeant, I thank you very much, and happy holidays to you, too. You, too. Thank you. All right, bye. Sergeant Howard, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you just fine. All right, thanks. Uh, thanks for taking the time with me. Uh, let's see, just kind of give me a rundown on, on what you are doing over there in Afghanistan, who you deployed with. Uh, I right now deploy with a second mile forward, um, Group 20, Marine Air Control Group 28, and Mass Marine Air Support Squadron 1. It's a long name. <laughs> um, yeah, right now I'm with the CME company. I am the maintenance chief. I'm uh, normally a ground radio repairman, but I'm stepping up and doing another billet. Yeah. Well, we got Thanksgiving coming up, and I'm sure you're wishing you're home with your family. Um, what are you, 
where are your thoughts right now as the holidays approaching? Holidays approaching? Yeah. I don't think about them that much because this, be this is my third Thanksgiving missing. Oh. Actually, my fourth, actually. But um, I really don't think that much about it because all I do is come on, come on, wife and kids every now and then. My mom and my dad every now and then. Plus, my birthday is usually around Thanksgiving anyway. <laughs> so you got at least a little bit more to celebrate too around that time, right? Yep. <laughs> but it is what it is. Yeah. How long have you been in active service? I've been active duty as of, Jan- of January of this coming year. I'll be in for seven years. Seven years. No, let's see. How long have you been in Afghanistan? Uh, since August time frame. Since August. Now tell me about this chieftain run that you guys took part in. <laughs> um. Chieftain run. It was something new to me because it's my first time being with a wing unit. But uh, under, but pretty much is um, it started I think in 1992 with the unit, and um, it was a remembrance of people that had passed away. I think uh, it started because Lance Corporal has lost his lost his life in some kind of car accident or something. Like that. I don't remember the exact details. Yeah. But so they've been doing it every year. It's a 24 hour run. And usually we run it in twos. At night we run in twos here, and then during the day is one person. Usually run for 30 minutes to set route. In the 30 minutes, it, the route was, I think, a two-mile route. And doing 30 minutes and heading off the baton, it was just pretty much a run just, just a remembrance of Marines that lost, that lost their lives. Right. How, many, how many shifts did you run? Uh, that day I ran two. Ran two. You remember how many actually took part in it? Uh, here in Afghanistan, I want to say <clears throat> a little anywhere between eight of a hundred. No, because we was also doing a state side and our back our our home unit that stayed back. They were doing it at the same time we was doing it. Yeah. So I don't know how many was doing a state side, but I know it was like anywhere between eight and a hundred of us doing it here. What's been? Let me back for just a second. Uh, Tell me a little bit more about your unit and uh, what you guys are into at this point, if you could. Wait one. Uh, tell me more about your unit and what you guys are, are into, if you could, at this point in time. Sergeant, you still with me? You there, sir? Oh, you still with me? Uh, yes. <laughs> um, pretty much what we do, what my company does, we make sure the the, the air the ground guys is able to talk to the aircraft and our officers and the air to controllers. Pretty much, my guys, we make sure the comm stays up between the two. Imagine that uh, everybody's spirits are still up over there. I'm sure. Is everybody's what? Everybody's spirits are still up. Oh yes, because we're halfway there. Yeah, we're almost done. <laughs> hey, how are you guys keeping yourselves entertained throughout all of this? Like what are, what are some of the things you guys been doing? Um, 
<laughs> movies, TV shows. Um, some guys, a lot of guys go to the gym. Yeah. Yeah, between the gym, watching TV, watching movies, and cracking on each other, cracking jokes on each other. <laughs> Can you tell me one of the best jokes has been cracked? <laughs> or they? Or uh, they it's not appropriate clear. for this whole conversation. <laughs> that, that's, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> 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 You, have you got one that could that could go? <laughs> no, I really don't. <laughs> oh, has there been kind of a favorite TV show among the group that everybody just gets together and watch? Um. Well, we just finished. We just finished the fourth season, of True Blood. Oh. Uh, we just finished. Um, what show? We just finished. Right now, we're on the Shield. We have all seven seasons, so we're on season four right now. Yeah. There's another show we just finished. Can't remember the name of it. Oh yeah, Sons of Anarchy. Sons of Anarchy, great. You guys been able to keep up with any football or anything? Of course. Uh, it won't be. And no. Oh yeah, I forgot about that football in there. <laughs> Even though it's a day, we're a day a little ahead of it, but. We still watch football religiously. Oh, yeah. If not, I'm streaming it off the computer. <laughs> is there one favorite team among the company, or is it kind of spread out? It's spread out. That's one. Some of the things that we joke about, about whose yeah. team's what. <laughs> is there anything that you want to add, maybe for the readers to? Give them some sort of sense of of what you what you're encountering and, and how you're feeling. All I'm gonna say is they just keep us in our prayers. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. If you guys had any visitors over there to kind of help the morale. Any, any special guests lately? This year, I haven't seen any. <laughs> just, just deployment. Right. If they came. I if they came by and heard them because when I was out here last year, we had Lieutenant Dan's band out here mm-hmm. with uh, Gary Sinise yeah. and some country singer. I can't remember her name. But we did have the Redskins Chillers come out here not too long oh, ago. That was nice. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm dead. Yes. <laughs> what, what kind of players? Players? Forget. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of plans <laughs> does this company have for, for Thanksgiving for Christmas? Um, usually, as right now, usually, um, like, somebody always sends a Christmas tree, so... They're already making plans putting the Christmas trees up in both our shops. Yeah. And one of our staff and CEOs lovely said they didn't like Christmas. That 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 made them, they just decked the whole area out because of that. Oh. It's all decked in Christmas now. They're playing Christmas music as soon as you walk in the door. <laughs> already. <laughs> yeah, that's but good. usually there's something going on at Chow Hall. And sometimes we have a secret Santa, but I don't think we're doing it this year. It's called that Christmas creep, I think, where everything starts getting set up earlier and earlier every year. So I guess you guys are just kind well, of feeling the same thing. Well, he kind of said he didn't like Christmas decorations. Uh, we have time on our hands. We went buck wild. <laughs> I'm sure everybody's going to have Thanksgiving meal, I'm sure. Maybe watch a little football to get get a chance. Yep. Yeah. So we'll probably be watching football Friday, but who's counting? Yeah. It's, it's all the same to everybody. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> but luckily we get the replays because um, I like football, but I'm not going to stay up all night watching it. Right. <laughs> I need my sleep. <laughs> yeah. 
you probably still be able to hear everybody else cheering though, won't you? No, because um, we don't have we don't have the TV in our room. Can it's usually in our shops or chow hall. Yeah, good. At least at least you guys will be able to get some sleep. <laughs> but since I'm Marine Corps, I've been I can sleep through almost anything nowadays. Right. Anything else that you want to want to share with me, Sergeant? Before I let you go. No, I just I kind of shocked that you got my name. That's all. <laughs> well, we have it was just a random search. Well, we have pretty good communication here. A lot of emails being passed around, so yeah. a lot of information gets gets through to the media. I mean, this it goes through the right channels, of course, but. I think it was, uh, let me see where Yeah. Uh, yeah, because no, I had to look the newspaper up because I didn't remember the Green Hills because I grew up in Hermitage. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And yeah, we've gotten we, we've gotten over there, Hermitage and Donaldson. Starting to branch up a little bit more, I believe. Is it still booming? <laughs> yeah, we're, we're still, we're still dishing everything out, but, um, Hey, listen, thank you so much for all that you do for our country. Really appreciate it, and definitely will keep you in the prayers. All right, thank you. Thank you. Have, have Be safe. You have a good one. Thank you. All right, you too. Oh. Just a minute, let me get out of the noise. I'm in the newsroom. <laughs> How are you this morning? Well, I guess it's not morning there. Uh, yeah, no, sir. It's uh, 1,700 here. So it's, uh, All right. Doing pretty good today, though. All right. Well, that's always a good thing. Okay. Um, how much family do you have in Winchester? In Winchester, probably uh, most of my family. I got uh, my mom, stepfather, uh, grandmother, aunt, uh, uncles, a lot of cousins, uh, a lot of brothers and sisters. What, what's your mom's name and your stepfather and your grandmother? Uh, my mother's name is uh, Debbie Risen. My stepfather is uh, James Risen. My grandmother Grandma. is Dolores Estes. Okay. Are you married? I'm divorced. Okay. I just wondered if you had a family somewhere else or if they were all here in town. I got more family in uh, in North Carolina and South Carolina, but uh, that's about it. Okay. How long have you been in Afghanistan? Uh, this go around, I've been here for about three and a half months. How long were you there the first time? A year. A year. That well, was from uh, January '09 to January '10. So this is your second Thanksgiving in Afghanistan. Yes, sir. How difficult is it being away from your family on the holidays? Uh, it's, it's always pretty difficult uh, not to be with family. Um, but I've, I've been in the Marine Corps for going on nine years, so I'm, I'm kind of used to not being around so much. Uh, but right. being out here is, is a, little, a little more difficult. Uh, you know, you really just want to be home with family, but you can't be. There's there's no option out here if you're stuck. And, uh, that makes it difficult. How often do you get to speak with your family? Or are you in communication um, with them? How often? I speak to them uh, on email. Uh probably once or twice every week. Uh, not very often do I get to make a phone call. Uh, a lot of times operational tempo prevents us from uh, from making a phone call like we would want. But uh, I probably speak on the phone to them maybe once every, a month or so. Well, at least you have email contact. That's got to make it a little bit easier. I know back in the day my, my brother retired from the Army, and he was in Afghanistan, and he was over in Turkey and places. And there were times that you just had to mail. They couldn't email. And it made it sometimes it'd be a month or two months before we could hear from him. So the email has to make it a little bit easier. Right. You know, just modern, uh, modern technology and all that's really made deployments a little bit easier than they used to be for sure. What are the holidays like? Do you guys get a chance to have a holiday meal or is that possible? Uh, uh, out here, it, it just really depends on the missions, uh, what's going on. Um, you know, as, as a command, the command I'm at, every now and then we'll, we'll have uh, 
you know, depending on the holiday, we'll have just a pause in our operations just for a few minutes so everybody can get together. And uh, our commanding officer is really good about, uh, you know, ensuring that everybody at least gets the, a second to take a break to, to think about family and, uh, you know, to consider why we're here uh, during certain operations. Uh, we do get meals at the uh, chow hall. Uh, normally, it's to be honest with you, it's the same thing all the time. They just add a little bit extra for Thanksgiving and Christmas. Um, but for the most part, it's really we don't get much downtime for a holiday or anything. Just don't have a lot of time. Always to think busy about. supporting the warfighters. Well, growing up in Winchester, you're well aware that uh, the mayor's an ex-marine, and uh, the the city does a really good job honoring the veterans and supporting the troops. How does that make you feel having knowing that support is is here in your hometown? Um, it makes me feel good. Uh, knowing that uh, the community leaders, uh, you know, they, they are there to support the veterans and the troops in general. Uh, you know, knowing the mayor's an ex-Marine, that's uh, you know, that's always a good feeling too. Um, you know, being a Marine, but it's nice to have a little bit of support from back home. A lot of communities don't have that, and uh, you know, the veterans don't have the benefit of that. And uh, so it's nice knowing that I, that I have at least that. Well, he uh, he was very proud of his service, and I told him I was going to be talking to you this morning, and he told me to tell you that he was thinking about you guys and uh, uh, wish you guys well and uh, a happy Thanksgiving because he's a, he's a big supporter of all the troops. And uh, uh, as he says, once a Marine, always a Marine. That's true. Uh, if you talk to him again, tell him I said Semper Fi. Well, I'll see him this afternoon because he told me he's going to check and see, see how it went. Uh, is there anything you'd like to see family uh, since you're not going to be home with them over the holidays? Is there anything you'd like to say to them or anybody in the community? Um, you know, for the family, I would just simply say that, uh, you know, I miss you guys. I'm thinking about you. I wish I could be there. I appreciate your support for me uh, and understanding why I'm here. Um, and, uh, that they're in my thoughts and prayers and in my heart. And then for the community, um, you know, I would say simply that, you know, this is a time of the Thanksgiving, uh, looking back at seeing all the blessings that we have as Americans, and, uh, you know, outside of America, you know, there's so much that the world doesn't have. We have many advantages and many things to be thankful for and to, uh, you know, really take the time to stop and think about, you know, our family and our loved ones and, uh, you know, be more appreciative of, of that uh, as Americans and uh, is what we have because the reality is we could, there's coming, there could be a time soon that we won't have things the way the economy is going and uh, you know, just okay, so now he, when he appreciate called me, little things, I guess. He said you were a lieutenant. On the paper they sent me, it said you were a sergeant. So are you a lieutenant? I'm a sergeant. You're a sergeant. Okay, well, when he told me he was connecting me with lieutenant, I said, okay, now it says sergeant. But okay, so you are a sergeant. And then, <laughs> Yes, sir. Okay. And it says you are a, a oh, hell, I lost my, my notes. Uh, so how much longer will you be in that question? I'm sorry, sir? How much longer would you be in Afghanistan? Um, about three more months. Okay. And until your home February. Base, where's your home base? North Carolina? It's a, yes, yes, sir. Marine Corps Air Station, New River. Yes. Okay. In Jacksonville, North Carolina. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for your time. And uh, like I said, as a have a long line of uh, soldiers in the family, and we really do appreciate what you guys are doing over there. And uh, you are in our thoughts and our prayers every day. So just stay safe and keep up your good work. All right. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Hello. On this Hello. Stephen Horst. Hello, Staff Sergeant. My name's John Galuli. I'm a reporter with the Marietta Daily Journal. How are you today? Fine, sir. How are you doing? Thank you for chatting with us. We wanted to kind of tell your story and do a little interview with you for our readers as we approach the Thanksgiving holiday. And I uh, want to know if you had a couple minutes to chat. Yes, sir. Okay, great. Start out... Um, um, Staff Sergeant with your name. I want to make sure I spell it right. Spell it for me. It's uh, first name Luis L U I S. Uh huh. 
And last name Juarez, J U A R E Z. Okay. And your title you, your title is a staff sergeant in the Marine Corps. Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. And, and how old are you? I am 26. 26. And where what city were you born and reared in? Marietta? Um no, I was actually born in Mexico and I enlisted from um Marietta, actually from the station over at Kennesaw. Oh, okay. Cool. And you, wh- what high school did you go to? Um, I went to Marietta High School. And you, what year did you graduate? I graduated in '03. In '03, and did you go directly into yes. the Marine Corps from there? Uh, no, I actually took a, um, I took like a pretty much almost a whole year break, uh-huh. and then um, I wasn't going to join the Marines. But you know, my dad kept pushing me to go to college. I was like, Dad, I don't want to go to college. Yeah. <laughs> and then I just um, saw the commercial, and I decided I wanted to join the Marines. So what made you decide to do that? Um, I don't know. I mean, I didn't want to go to college, so I mean, I had to do something because my dad kept pushing me to go to college. So I had to pick a branch, and I mean, I did my well. I didn't know much about the Marines actually, but. Um, I talked to the recruiter, I got the info, and, I mean, he pretty much told me that that the Marine Corps was the best branch, and I went with it, and I'm here. Is that? Did you find that to be the case? I hear, you know, the Marine is the top of yes. the top of the fight <laughs> there. I bet it's hard, too, boot yeah, camp and all that. I never would have made uh-huh. it. Now, now uh, no. <laughs> no, are you kidding? All that climbing up the rope and the ladder? <laughs> no. Nah, that's easy. That's easy, sir. Uh, maybe easy for you. Uh, <laughs> now tell me, so you're located on the same base that your uh, your friend I just spoke to there, uh, Corporal Mara, is? Um, I don't know. I believe he's from Cherry Point. Oh, where is are he? you? Or I'm from I'm at um, Marine Corps Air Station Beaufort. That's in South Carolina. Okay, but y- y'all are on the same Afghanistan base together. Yes. Okay. Yes, we are. And what is your job and function? What do you do there? Um, I'm pretty much just a um, a um, aviation technician. Um, I'm electrician. My work center that um, I'm over here running pretty much does the um, repair for like the displays of um, the Ospreys and Harriers, the aircraft. The displays, the radar. We pretty much fix all their avionics equipment. Okay. So your job is to basically be on the base. You don't go outside into the field, so yeah. to speak. No, no, no. How long no, we don't, you, sir. We don't how, get that opportunity. How, how long have you been there? Uh, I've been here for a few months. Um, yeah. Have you got about a About three. About three months? What was that? Yeah. Have you got a chance to meet with the uh, local Afghani people? Uh, no, sir, I have not. Okay. I have well, not. Is this your first time overseas? Uh, no, sir, this is um, my third time. Your third time? I did time? a um, boat deployment. Yeah, I did it. Well, this is my first time in country. Um, I didn't get an opportunity to go to Iraq, so um, but I did go on a MEW, Marine Expedition Unit, on um, on a boat. Uh, that was in '06. Then in '09, I went to Japan to um, help out the 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 Marines out there because we do um, deployments to Japan just to help out like the manpower. Mm-hmm. I went to Japan for six months as well, and now I'm here. Um, is your father and your family still here in Marietta? Yes, sir. There. So do you when you when you are off duty? Do you get to come and meet up with them and have a family reunion? And- yes, um, actually, me and my wife, we try to make it down there. Um, at least every um holiday, we drive down there, or my parents, my parents drive up to South Carolina. But so, I mean, so yeah, your, your family is in South Carolina now. No, my my family is in Georgia. My family and my wife's family are still in Georgia. Okay, they, they all live by um Roswell Road. Yeah. Roswell Road? Yeah, that's um, where my parents live. What is your wife's name? Um, Anya, A-N-N-I-A. And what is your uh, parents' names? 
Uh, my dad is Baltazar, B A L T A Z A R, and my mom is Sylvia, S I L V I A. And what are all those? What does your wife and your parents do for a living? Um, my, my dad he works at Casablanca. Um, they built like um, furniture for um, fast food restaurants or for for new businesses and stuff like mm-hmm. cashier. So all that is all like woodwork. And um, my mom works for the laundry department for like all the local hospitals. Mm-hmm. Um, and then my my wife right now she currently um, holds a position for parent liaison at um, Lockett Elementary. Okay. Yeah, I know that school. Yeah. Do Do you have any kids yeah. yet? Or are you? Um, uh, no, sir. No, no kids yet. No kids. Um. Well, tell me about what what would you normally be doing if you were home at this time? Well, if I was home, sir, I'll probably be right now. I'll probably be preparing to um cook. I like to cook. I'm not. I don't think I'm very good at it. But I mean, everybody seems to like it. They're probably just because they don't want to cook themselves. <laughs> but so <laughs> I usually cook a um, turkey. Like last year, I um it was the first time we um we deep fried a turkey. I did that. Um, yeah, we usually try to, all the guys, we get together and all the girls get together and they do their thing. And, you know, we have a couple of beers, play a couple of games. That's about it. It's a big family Angry. reunion. Yeah, pretty much. My family comes over to her family's house or her family comes over to my family's house and we just get together. How many siblings do you have, brothers and sisters? Um, I have a little brother. He's going to, to marry at a high right now. Uh huh. And um, and I have a bigger sister. And she's out of married at a yeah. high. What what grade is your yeah, brother? Yeah, she in? also went. To, I believe he might be a freshman or sophomore now. I'm not. I'm not sure. I it, think he's a sophomore. What's it like being, you know, on the other side of the world from them? Is it hard? <laughs> it's got to be terribly yeah, hard. Yeah. Yeah, it's hard, especially when, you know, um, when you start talking to your wife, you know, and she tells you about, you know, certain parties or, you know, what my what my niece is doing now or, you know, just, I mean, just simple, like, get-togethers, you know, in the weekends, you know, you really start missing back home, being back home. Is but, this your is this your yeah. first Thanksgiving away from home? Uh, no, this is my, uh, my, my third, actually. You've, so you've done this before? Yes, sir. Do you ha- do you attend yeah. a local church here in Marietta? Uh, no, sir. Because you're always uh, in the military. Me and my wife, uh, yeah, pretty much. I mean, when we go home to Marietta, we usually just spend time with the family stuff. We do go to church. Um, I believe St. Gregory's by um, by Kennestone Hospital sometimes, but it's not very. Yeah, it's not like every Sunday, sir. Um, what is your favorite Thanksgiving memory? I don't know, sir. I don't think I have one in particular. Probably um, just, just being with no, family I mean, in general. Yeah, pretty much just being with family, sir. I mean, I really look forward to doing that kind of stuff all the time. What is your favorite thing about being over there in uh, Afghanistan? What do you? What are some things you really enjoy? Well. Back in the States, when I repair aircraft components, you know, just for pilots to get their required hours to keep their quals up. Over here, I know that us, you know, myself and my Marines, you know, every time we repair a component, it's actually going on an aircraft to complete the mission, you know, to help the country out. And, I mean, I think that's a very, very rewarding feeling. Do you feel um, supported by... um by your country, by the U.S. citizens back home. I noticed you put on your application that you didn't think many people cared about, you know, the war any uh, anymore. And you, I come across that as well. But um, I yeah. mean, what do you, what do you think people well, think back home? That was my first opinion, sir. But uh, while being out here, I've uh, I've gotten a lot of support and um, letters and packages and just. Thank you notes from Americans pretty much all across the nation. And, I mean, it's pretty much changed my mindset. I mean, I mean, there's a lot of Marines that 
don't get the chance to deploy out here, then don't find, you know, they never get the opportunity to actually see the support of all the Americans that actually still care. So, I don't know. I think my opinion about that has changed being out here. What's it like to get that kind of support? Does it make you feel good? Yes, it does. I mean, it actually makes me feel, you know, that there's people, there's, there's people still out there that care about what we do and that support what we do. So, And, and you get that, what, just through letters and care packages and things? Yes. Yes, sir. What would you like to say to the people back home in Marietta um, who are going to read this? What um, do you want them to know about what you're doing out there? Just let them know that there's Marines, soldiers, I mean, just the whole, you know, U.S. military out here. We're just trying to do our best to, to support them and keep keep our freedom, pretty much, sir. And I think we're all doing a pretty good job out here. When, um, when, did, you, when did you come over here from Mexico to Marietta? Uh, I got there in 94, sir. In '94, so you were you were you were just a young. I was boy. seven, just seven. Uh, yeah, you, yeah, I was seven or eight, something like that. Did y'all? Why did you come up here from Mexico? Why did your family come? Just to, a better um, way of life, or? Yes, yeah, pretty much. I mean, um, I, I never actually talked to my dad about that. My dad was the one that came out here when um, the first Bush he gave the amnesty, mm-hmm. and he came down here, and then um, he. He got us all resident cards, and then he moved us up here. And then, um, I mean, I never asked why or anything, but, I mean, I could only imagine it was for for a better life did for you me decide, and my sister at the time. Did you decide to become a citizen, or do you want to go back to Mexico? No, I'm a U.S. citizen, sir. Okay. So I think want, I want to stay here. You want to stay I'm, here and I'm not, not going back. back. Well, you were probably so yeah. young, you probably don't even remember it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean... We had gone back a couple of Christmases and stuff. Uh, no, that's just not. It's, it wouldn't be for me or for my wife. I mean, my wife's pretty much in the same boat I am. Mm-hmm. She's first generation as well. So, yeah, we want to go back. Well, I, um, uh, Staff Sergeant, I thank you for chatting with me, and um, we're grateful for all you do out there for us. Any final thoughts you want to say? No, sir. Just um. Thank you for the opportunity, and um, that, no, that's about it, sir. This will be this will be up on our website um, tomorrow at mdjonline.com, so you could be able to read it okay. um, from where you are. And you have a happy Thanksgiving. All right, you too, sir. Thank you.